Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the City Council meeting of Tuesday, April the 12th. We are going to start our meeting off by going in camera to deal with some matters that we have on our agenda that belong in camera. I'm looking for a motion to go in camera. Motion by Councillor Dabrowski, second by Councillor Thompson. If there's no discussion to this, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, and that's unanimous. Uh, just a reminder to everyone, please leave your electronic devices here in council chambers. We'll resume downstairs and take your yellow sheets uh, that Ms. Rezulo has provided for all of us. And uh, we'll meet downstairs in committee room two. Afterward, we'll resume back here in council chambers.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the regularly scheduled part of the agenda for city council meeting of Tuesday, April the 12th. We just finished in camera downstairs in committee room two, and now we're gonna do our regularly scheduled meeting as advertised. So first order of business, we like to start our meetings off with the singing of O Canada. I'll introduce our singer, then I'll ask if you would please stand. Kristen Patterson. Kristen, and we have recorded versions of the national anthem. Kristen is a resident of Chippewa, born and raised. She performs the national anthem at her Rem Remembrance Day ceremonies. She's married with two daughters. Kristen works at Morrison Sun Funeral Home as a funeral director and has been there for 19 years. She's been singing since the age of four and it's evident with her rendition of her national anthem that she's been doing this for a long time. So ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem of Canada. Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land. And glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on a guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on a guard for Kristen, thank you very much. Great job, as always. We really appreciate you allowing us to use your recorded voice for singing the national anthem. And next up, our land acknowledgement and traditional indigenous meeting opening with the aim of educating our community. I'd like to invite Chief Stacy LaForme, Chief of the Mississaugas of the Credit, to share his testimony as we acknowledge and thank the indigenous peoples who were stewards of this land for a millennia before. Any human chief are Stacey LaForme, Mississaugas is a credit. I'd like to acknowledge the creator, the world around us, and our place within it. I acknowledge the many nations that walked this land in the past, the many nations that walk it today, and welcome you to the treaty lands of the Mississaugas of the Anishinaabe. Bay. The treaties with the Mississaugas are the Niagara Treaty of 1781 and the Between the Lakes Treaty of 1792. I would also like to acknowledge the Treaty of 1764 that recognized the Royal Proclamation of 1763, which set a new relationship between the Indigenous people and the Crown. Chimigwich Bumpi. Thank you very much for that, Chief Stacy LaForme. So now, moving on, we are looking for an adoption of the Council Minutes from March the 22nd. Moved by Councillor Campbell, seconded by Councillor Peter Angelo. All those in favor? And that's approved. Thank you for that. Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Yes, Councillor Iannone. Thank you. There's, as I was reading the minutes, there's quite a few reports that said I abstained from the vote. And I don't, I don't remember, I might be voting late or maybe 
you're not seeing me. I, I know once I was letting my dogs out and I heard you call the a vote and said it's unanimous. I really wasn't on the screen at that time. But I, I could we just make sure I'm being recognized for voting? Uh, I always try to look for you, Council. I know. I, I, it's very difficult with me on Zoom. I get that. But I just wanted it to be reflected back in the minutes. Okay. Thank you for that. Mr. Clerk, uh, you can help me too, please. Uh, yes, thanks, Your Worship. Uh, I usually also try and keep an eye on, on the screen as well. Uh, so just a, a friendly reminder for the, the councillor, uh, please, I think the easiest way is to just make sure your hand is up when the vote is called, um, and we'll watch for that specifically. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you for that. Um, now moving on to disclosures of a pecuniary interest. Do you have any councillor Lococo and then Thompson, and then Peter Angelo and Cario. Thank you. Can I go ahead? Yes. That's oh, yeah. right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I have a conflict with 8.1 CLK 2022-08, the fee waiver, only with two of them on there for the Downtown Board of Management. The other ones I do not have a conflict, and my conflict is my husband's former employer. Okay. Thank you for that. Councillor Thompson? Yes, I have uh, three uh, conflicts uh, in the planning, uh, AM 22 23, 24, and 25. Okay. Okay, thank you for that. Councillor Peter Angelo? Yeah, thanks, Your Worship. Uh, I believe it's under correspondence, the Niagara official plan. The reports are CLKC 2022-47, PDS 6 2022. Uh, just in specific with the areas affected by the preferred urban settlement area recommendations, my family owns land that's affected. I'll leave this here for the clerk. Okay, thank you for that. Councillor Cario. Thank you, Your Worship. On um, 20 AM 2021-023, um, the Embassy Suites is named in some relocation of parking spots to Dunn Street, so I have to declare a conflict on that one. I'm the next door neighbor okay. uh, of the Embassy Suites. Okay, thank you for that. And any other disclosures? Okay, seeing none. We'll move on to everyone's favorite part of the meeting, the mayor's reports and announcements. First off, we've got some birthdays. I'd like to wish a happy birthday to Councillor Dabrowski, which was Thursday, March the 31st. Also to Councillor Iannone, which is Wednesday, April the 13th. And to Steve Norris, our director of IT, Thursday, April the 14th. So happy birthday to all the birthday people. Obituaries. Uh, John O'Flynn, retired health and safety administrator for the city of Niagara Falls, passed away. Julia Ann Johnson, mother of Jeanette Topliff of our human resources department and mother-in-law of Tim from Fire Services. And Claude Colley, father of Doug Colley with our Fire Services. Our condolences to all of these individuals. The new McBain Center is now open. Some good news. Our facility is open. We've got a focus on older adult programs, focus on 60 plus, but not limited to. We have classes, activities, yoga, pickleball, uh, squash, racquetball, uh, all aquatics. The pool's open. We have swimming lessons and aquatics and lane swimming for year round. And also for anybody that's getting qualified or requalified as a lifeguard, you'll have your opportunity. You'll be able to do that right at the McBain Center. The indoor walking track is open all year round and it's always free for all <laughs> residents. The courts are for rent, as I mentioned, pickleball, basketball, squash, and racquetball, and special events for both youth. Check the website to find out what specifically is going on. And special events, check the website for the Sports and Rec Fair, which is Saturday, April the 23rd from 10 till two. The Kids Business Fair, Saturday, April the 30th, from noon until 4 p.m. The Niagara Falls Public Library branch is still open at McBain. The My City Customer Service Desk remains open. So anyone that needs to pay for a parking ticket, property taxes, water bill, bus passes, or other can still do that at the McBain Center. Also like to point out, I was joined by Councillor Cario last week for a visit from the Scottish Minister, Angus Robertson. He's a member of the Scottish Parliament, Cabinet Secretary for the Constitution, <clears throat> External Affairs and Culture, and Castles. 
So a very interesting uh, fellow and uh, had a really neat visit here in Niagara Falls. They had the Niagara Regional Police Pipe Band uh, welcomed him. And uh, of course, we turned the falls the colors of Scotland as well that night. So Did real nice of... Pardon me? Did you go for Haggis? Uh, we didn't, but we're saving it for Robbie Burns night. We're going to invite you over there to, to do that. Apparently, he was telling us they have a vegetarian version of Haggis now, too, which is, yeah, it sounded really uh, yummy. Yeah. All right. City Council representatives, uh, I'd like to thank Councilor Strange and Peter Angelo for representing the city at the Niagara Sweep for Kids Bond Spiel for Boys and Girls Club. Did you win that? Or? Didn't you win that? Didn't I, you know what? I, I did. I won it one year, and uh, so I've never gone back, so I'm still undefeated. That's right. Um, it was a team effort, uh, but uh, but I was one of the one of the group. You notice that, Mr. CAO, champion over here, champion. Um, Good team. <laughs> I also like to thank Councillor uh, Peter Angelo for the representing the city at the Mass Niagara Badminton League inauguration. Councillor Thompson representing the city at the Mucho Burrito Grand Opening. I'm sorry, Councillor Thompson at the Evan Court's 90th birthday at McDonald's. Thank you for being there at that one. I know you had a good time at that one. <laughs> also to Councillor Dabrowski representing the city at the Mucho Burrito Grand Opening. And also again, Councillor Kerry representing the city at the Ontario Minister of Energy and at Tura Power Announcement on the province's hydrogen strategy. I know, Councillor, you're there as a commissioner and a, a city councillor. So appreciate you being there. Pretty exciting development uh, in Niagara Falls. It's OPG's first and biggest hydrogen producing plant that'll be built right here in Niagara Falls. That'll use uh, not much more than electricity and water and the byproduct is just water. So real neat, clean energy focus. We had some grand openings. Uh, we had McGuire. We had WTF Burgers, which um, by the way represents, uh, stands for We the Finest. Oh yeah, there's McGuire, I'm sorry, the first one was McGuire. That was the, uh, and I was joined by Councillor Dabrowski. That was the opening of the African uh, restaurant right there. That's McGuire in Chippewa, in the old Chippewa House uh, restaurant. Then we had WTF and uh, Burgers. That's in the Town and Country Plaza by TD. And that represents, stands for We the Finest Burgers. Uh, we had an event at Sticks and Bricks Realty. They had an Easter community event on Thorold Stone Road, just up from Five Corners. Uh, and then we had seven downtown business openings. We, we had Leo Lit Ick. We had Codewell Banker, Momentum Realty Brokerage, The Captain's Quarters and Queenie's Boutique, Moxie Personal Training, Kaizia Couture, Demenez, Riley Irish Dance, and AHA Canada. And you can see those are all the entrepreneurs there right in front of City Hall. After we did individual grand openings at their businesses, then we did one big grand opening in front of City Hall. So they're all very, very excited to be joining the ranks of the other entrepreneurs along Queen Street. So thank you to all the downtown BIA and all their help with that. And lastly, I should point out the United Way Municipal Cup um, took place. And I'd like to thank all the staff and elected officials for the City of Niagara Falls for your great support in winning this year's Mun Municipal Cup for the United Way fundraising and I know that our CAO is on the board of directors for the United Way uh, Municipal, uh, it helps in many things including the Municipal Cup and I'm sure he's very proud that his first year here we win the Municipal Cup. And if I could draw your attention to the video screens, we've got a little video here where you're gonna see what we did. Betty DeCero here, Lord Mayor, Town of Niagara-on-the-Lake. In 2021, United Way Niagara set out to do better by pledging to improve the quality of lives of people in need in the Niagara region. Part of this is that each municipality challenges each other to see who can get the highest employee participation. And I'm here to congratulate Niagara Falls for winning this challenge. Betty, thank you very much. Look at this, the United Way Municipal Challenge Cup. Well, 
you know, we're really excited and I'm proud of all the employees at the City of Niagara Falls for working so hard, being so dedicated to support the United Way of Niagara. Well, I've checked and this holds exactly two pitchers of whatever beverage it is that you want to put in it and things taste a lot better when you drink from the cup, the Victory Cup. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yay, Niagara Falls. And uh, this is the cup, in case anybody's wondering. This is the Victory Cup. So if anybody wants to drink from it, here's your chance, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's> okay. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is the key to the city presentation portion of tonight's meeting. So I'd like to ask Rick Jenneret if you would come join me up here, please. Now, anyone who wants to take pictures, you can come right up to the wall here. To welcome everybody. You can come on the inside if you like. Uh, whatever works for you. So come on up here, Rick. Welcome, Tom. Yeah, come on up here. Step right over. So first off, uh, before we start the uh, presentation, I'd like to uh, acknowledge you brought some family with you, Rick. So you've got your wife. Sandra, and I think you called her, what was it, uh, your nickname I uh, used? Cupcake. Cupcake. <laughs> Cupcake. Uh, and your son, Chris. There's Chris in the back there. Uh, your stepdaughter, Shelly, and your husband, Brett. No, Brett's not here. Well, Brett's not here. Okay. But grandson is Okay. He's got, he's got a crutch. That's not good. How are you going to play baseball with that? First of all, they're playing hockey. So. Um. <laughs> <laughs> And I, and I know the family, I mean, they were coaching my son in baseball, and uh, these guys played uh, baseball. Is he going to be good? Are you going to be good for baseball? Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, good. Fingers crossed. And uh, Tammy. Yep. Yeah. Of course, Tammy Jennerette. And uh, also, we've got Larry Landon here. Okay. And, uh, yeah, right? Player Association, so welcome. Thank you for being here. Appreciate it. So, this man is a legendary sports broadcaster from Niagara. And I know born in St. Catharines, but lives in Niagara Falls. And affectionately known as RJ with the Sabres organization. If anyone had a chance to watch what happened there a couple weeks ago, that was special. I mean, that was really, really amazing. I mean, 20 minutes there on their feet, watching and listening and really feeling you. And I know, uh, and I've got a lot of friends in Buffalo, and this guy here can't walk the streets of Buffalo. Uh, here he's a little more anonymity, but in Buffalo it wouldn't happen. He'd have to bring a lot of pens with him, and he'd be doing a lot of pictures, and, and we know we appreciate that. So he was the play-by-play -play announcer for the Buffalo Sabres. He started with the team 1971-72 season. Longest tenured play-by-play -play announcer with a single team in NHL history. That's huge. In 1995-96, he moved to television and he doubled as TV and radio play-by-play. -play. He's best known for his colorful player nicknames and his passionate calls. And we were wondering if maybe it's possible you could do a couple of your passionate calls for us. I need a scenario. This isn't the scenario. No, this might be May Day. This could be May Day. It's getting there. So, uh, you know, on behalf of all of the city council, we're really excited to present to you the key to the city. And now I know that Buffalo loves you and your city loves you as well. Your hometown is proud of you. And this key, I'd like to explain to you, just as I present it to you, and I'll first I'll read the inscription. Rick Jenneret, 51 years, is a beloved sports broadcaster for the Buffalo Sabres, <laughs> making your hometown proud, April 12th, 2022. I can present that to you. Thank you. We're going to smile first and then I'll say it a little bit more. Where are we looking? We'll start to the right here. Shelly, you can come on this side. She's a photographer. I know. I am. <laughs> I was. I held the lighting uh, for a team picture when I won the championship this summer. So this key, this key is designed and hand painted by a local artist, and really exciting. Her name is Yuvi Reyes Rusi. This key is a unique, original piece of art created by one of our own 
local young artists right here in the city of Niagara Falls. Right? And this is a key, and it's very representative of the fact that you hold the key to many people's hearts. And we're very proud of you, and we like to think of you as a hometown guy. And you're part of Niagara. We, and I can tell you, and my personal story, I, I grew up a Habs fan. And whenever I would hear him yelling out the, he scores! Oh, man. It was real hard. But you were very, he was that good at what he did. And, and he definitely touched on everybody's emotional heartstrings. And I can tell you, he is one with the Buffalo Sabres. We're very proud of you. And I want to say on behalf of all of us, congratulations. You're an elite group with the key to the city. Congratulations. <laughs> history, current counselor Wayne Thompson would like to say a few words, right? Anyway, we're concentrating on Buffalo and the Bills, but I go back probably 50 years with uh, dealing this very important person in our community, and he was always working for the city of Niagara Falls and uh, he helped us get all of the uh, NHL teams playing baseball in here. And he was uh, the chairman at all of the events. So I think uh, the uh, key is really um, appropriate for you and all you've done for Buffalo, for hockey, and for the city of Niagara Falls. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, friend, and I, I just want to say, me, me and Rick go way back, because he was friends with my dad and connections with Heater and Donnie Lever, Ricky Lee, Mickey Benovenak at the Clancy's. Yeah. And he's just a special, special guy. And back in the day, when the Flyers and CJRN and uh, the stuff you, you don't realize that he battled, um, you know, cancer in 2014 when I was, and I've had this for a couple of years because Sandra was supposed to come in and talk and uh, she didn't end up coming because whatever happened, it didn't get canceled. But this was back in July of 2014 when I was running somewhere in Quebec, but we, we dedicated it uh, a day every day to someone who battled and you know, we had a word of the day and it was legendary and it's been here for a couple of years. So we just want you to have that. We love you, buddy. That's very nice. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Uh, Victor? Uh, Victor thanks. Peter Angelo? Yeah. yeah, thanks, Your Worship. And I just want to say uh, over, over, over to Mr. Generette, it's very easy for us to underestimate the magnitude that you've had uh, on the Buffalo fans and the people in Buffalo because we're in another city. But I mean, you know, so much has happened since the time that you started. I mean, you are synonymous with the name Buffalo Sabres, seeing as they started as a team in 1971, and that's when you started as well. And while there's been other people in the broadcast booth with you, you've been the driving fo uh, force behind everything that everyone remembers about it. I mean, there's so many uh, infamous calls that you've had, you know. Um, I mean, we all remember May Day, obviously. Um, well, I would say everyone except for the Buffalo fans, who they kind of have a little bit of amnesia when you mention that one. They don't really remember that one. But I mean, I know just growing up even, you know, all the games weren't on television. We had to listen to it on, on radio. So your voice, I mean, we became one with your voice. And, you know, hearing you call out La 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 Fontaine, you know, or whether it was, uh, you know, um, Now Do You Believe, you know, or even uh, 
I guess my all-time favorite, back where Jimmy Hoffa is, you know, um, <laughs> those are those are those are words that that uh, we would hear you say, you know, because we would hear them in our ears, but they actually paint a picture for us. And Rick, that's what really makes you so special. So, um, I mean, we're proud of you. We're proud of your accomplishments, and we're very proud that you called Niagara Falls home. So, thank you. Thank you. And now our city clerk, who's a huge Boston fan. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh boy. You have to tie. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the tie is just to, to counterbalance uh, the fact that I brought the jersey here tonight. Uh, but yeah, Rick, uh, I, I certainly appreciated your calls over the year. I think uh, uh, you certainly represented Niagara Falls. Uh, I, rem I remember as a, as, a, as a child listening to you when you started down here in CJRN, just down the street here. So um, I was uh, fortunately as a hockey fan in attendance the night that Brad May scored the overtime goal. <laughs> Uh, my ex-wife at the time uh, predicted the the uh, the fact that Brad May would score that goal, but really? uh, listening to it to uh, on the radio afterwards and the replays afterwards uh, was certainly, uh, as the councillor pointed out, legendary. Um, it, just being a hockey fan, being in the building that night, and listening to your call afterwards was amazing. So you've done Niagara Falls proud, and I think the the key represents that here tonight. I want to say for anyone who gets the opportunity, uh, Rick's bathroom. Let's talk about that, Sandra. Could you just share a little bit about the bathroom? Uh, what was my name? Cupcake. Cupcake. <laughs> well, you get. I, I, we've been in. Some of us have been able to go and see the bathroom, and then it's like, to say, please, Sandra, you can do a better job. Please come up. What happened was when we built a house, I looked at tiles for Rick's bathroom. I saw one that way deep in the background had, it appeared to be newsprint. And I thought, wouldn't it be nice if it was his newspaper articles? So our daughter and I got together, put our heads together, found a place that would do custom tiles. She took all the pictures of the newspaper articles. And we threw them on the floor and took pictures. And they became tiles. <laughs> so, and I did not have anything to do with this. <laughs> <laughs> not my ego. This was... That's no, but, but imagine the bathroom, and it's all legendary articles of the legend. Oh, so every time you go in the, sh the bathroom, <laughs> <laughs> whatever you're doing, you're thinking of Rick. <laughs> so anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank I just want to say thank you very much to all the Generat family and uh, extended family. We really appreciate you coming here tonight to be with us. This is as special for us as it is for you. And, and i got to share echo the sentiments. CJRN. That was legendary, and to listen to that, and to hear it, and the excitement, you felt like you were there. So a lot of us will have memories that we'll be telling our kids before TV, they won't, before we watch that TV, they won't even know what that means. <laughs> anyway, on behalf of the city, congratulations. We're very proud of you. Thank you. Yeah. Find a place for it. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank guys. You very much. Room got a little warm. That was exciting. Oh, a lot of passion, a lot of energy, a lot of emotion. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, so next up, um, we've got a presentation from Fax. So we've got Caroline Pragrabia and Brett Sweeney of Fax who are going to make a brief five minute presentation. So uh, do we have them on board, Mr. Clerk? Okay, super. Welcome, can you, can you hear us? I can hear you. Oh, great. Are there? Okay, great, and Caroline, we can hear you too. And Brent, great. you're muted, as long as you know. So the, all right, great. So the floor is all yours, Caroline. 
Oh, wonderful. Well, thank you very much. I don't know how you follow that. My dad was <laughs> a huge fan of his, so um, that was amazing. So congratulations on that. Um, thank you very much for allowing us to come tonight. My name is Carolyn Colgravia, and I'm the uh, president of the Facts Foundation Board. In your notes, it says that I'm from Facts Niagara, and I'm actually not from the agency. I'm from the Fundraising Foundation. But I do have Brett Sweeney, who is from the agency and leads our communications efforts. So he's here to answer any questions you might have about the initiative that we want to introduce you to tonight. Okay, great. So Thank I, you. I am going to attempt to share my screen and see if this works. Oh dear. Where is it going to let me share screen? Okay. Oh, there we go. Can you see that? Yes, we can. Wonderful. Okay, so I would like to introduce you to a new initiative that we are bringing forward this year, which is the Mountain View Lemonade Day on Sunday, June 12th. On Sunday, June 12th, we are looking at kids across the entire Niagara region to help other kids go to camp. So Mountain View Lemonade Day is a community-driven event um, that we're going to encourage kids to rally a team. So whatever way they describe team, whether that's their hockey team, whether that's their classroom, whether that's just their group of friends in their neighborhood, to set up a lemonade stand and raise funds. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a video and then I have a couple of uh, slides after that to speak to you on. Can you hear that? Yep, we can hear. Great. So a couple of years ago, my sister and I started a lemonade stand. And it was just all about uh, we wanted to raise money. And then we got the idea that money should go to sending a kid to camp. Hi, I'm Carolyn Fulgrave, your president of the Facts Foundation Board. Every day we work with the Facts Agency and the hard work that they do to bring great quality services and programs to children across the Niagara region. For the past two years, COVID has taken a toll on every family and no more so than the families that we serve at Fox. Summer camps can be a great lifelong memories. So most importantly, it can help build social skills and self-confidence. Hi, I'm Mark Bastiano with the Mountain Beatles. And I'm honored and excited to be here today as a partner with Family and Children's Services to aid them in their crucial role as they protect children and strengthen families throughout our region. We're really excited to be part of this new initiative, which is really aimed to engage families, particularly young people, to get involved, create awareness in our communities, raise badly needed dollars, and have some fun along the way. I really want to encourage you to get involved and do your part. In 2022, our goal is to have 100 stands, and every stand to raise $1,000. It's a big, big goal that we want to do. $100,000 is going to create 400 plus big smiles next summer. We hope you'll help us out. On Sunday, June 12th, my sister and I will be hosting Mountain View Lemonade soon. Please help us and proclaim Sunday, June 12th as Mountain View Lemonade Day. I want to thank you in advance for all your support in something that truly will make a material difference in so many lives across the Niagara region. Please join us on Sunday, June 12th for Mountain View Lemonade Day. Cheers, guys. That was great. Thank you for that. Great. So this summer, um, we are looking for our generous sponsors 
to help us out, and which they have. And really the point is that for 2022, we are looking to send as many of our kids to camp as possible. And our goal is just to help these kids get back to some sense of normalcy, some sense of, uh, of, of self. So we're looking for 100 locations across the region. What our sponsors have enabled, or enabled us to do is to provide the children and the family and obviously the guardians and parents that are involved um, with a stand, with hats and, and t-shirts for the kids, with the cups, the pictures, the stickers, and also the lemon concentrate uh, and a few other little surprises will be in their package so that every single campaign that the kids run across the region every single 100 percent dollar goes towards sending another kid to camp um we've we've looked at the hundred stands and have a little bit of a strategy on how we see these playing out we base it on the elementary age population from stats canada and this is how it lies out so we're looking to niagara falls to host at least 18 stands i have a couple of friends in the falls and so I think there's going to be one in Stanford for sure. I know there's one of you on a chip already, um, but I'm looking really for council to help us out and, and really rally uh, all corners of Niagara Falls to get involved in all, all community groups to get involved and um, participate and have some fun on June 12th. So what we're here today is to ask you if you would participate, um, proclaim Sunday, June 12th as Lemonade Day in Niagara Falls for us. Um, and as we get closer to the event, continue to promote and encourage the community to get involved and get involved yourself. And as a special for Niagara Falls, we have an extra special ask for you as a community. You have a, an amazing icon that we know you color um, on occasion for special things that you believe are worthy causes. And we hope that uh, perhaps the falls could go yellow on June 12th in proclamation for this day. Um, so we're just asking for your help. We're asking for your encouragement. And thank you very much for your time today. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much, Caroline. Uh, we do have a question from... Uh... I have a question. I was okay, sure. Well, why don't you go ahead and do it? Yeah, great presentation through you. I think it's a very innovative idea to get the, all kids across the Niagara region and involved and in, to raise mm -hmm. funds for a great cause. Wondering, uh, maybe, th I don't know if Dale's on the call, but uh, through communications, I'd, I'd love to make a motion that supports the initiative. I'd, it'd be a long drawn out um, motion, but first of all, maybe communications uh, puts it up on our website, yep. through our Facebook social media channels, maybe even internally to, uh, to staff. But I, I'm myself, my family will support it. I hope uh, others around the, the horseshoe support it as well. But uh, yeah, if I can make a motion that communications works with the, uh, with the organization facts and with Mountain View just to, to help promote the event. But I think it's a great initiative that we'll see for, for years to come. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming to council and happy to support. Do you want to include in your motion then uh, two other things? <clears throat> One there, she just mentioned about turning the falls yellow that we send a request to the illumination board. Illumination board, board yeah. So in any and all requests, maybe not everything was communicated today, but if they can send us a, an email with bullet points as well, just so we could help communicate that to our staff, that'd be great. But uh, And then lastly, uh, yep. the, including the proclamation of Sunday, June the 12th, Mountain View Lemonade Day. Perfect. If I could add that to the okay. motion, that'd be great as well. Thanks for helping to save okay. <laughs> No problem. So motion by Councillor Dabrowski, second by Councillor Strange. And Mr. Clerk, so do we have everything encapsulated? Did we cover everything? Uh, yes, Your Worship. I think uh, that covered the, the ask from the uh, participants and uh, or from the presenter, sorry. And I think uh, we've covered everything. Okay. And does that cover everything on your end too, uh, Caroline and Brett? Did we, in that motion, before we call the vote, did we leave anything out? It, absolutely. That would be amazing to have your support like that. I want to thank Councillors for putting the motion forward and uh, adding the extra pieces to it. That's wonderful, and I look forward to hearing from uh, Dale in the communications department and, uh, well, Brett hearing from the communications department <laughs> and uh, working on it together. We really, really appreciate your support, and uh, we'll probably have a few other little requests for participating in some fun stuff as we get closer to the event. So, thank you so much for your time. Okay, that's great. Well, we're going we're gonna to call that vote then. All those in favor? Okay, and that was unanimous. So uh, well done, congratulations, thank you. It sounds like it's gonna be a great day, a lot of fun, and I'm sure Niagara Falls is gonna take our place and be strongly participating as well. Wonderful, thank you so, long, so much, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone, have a good night. Bye-bye, you Bye-bye now, okay, great thank meeting. you. Okay, moving on, we are now in the planning uh, portion of our agenda tonight. Mr. Clerk. 
Uh, would you like to introduce the next item on the agenda? Please. Okay, meeting is now being convened to consider a proposed amendment to the city's official plan, zoning bylaw, and site plan control bylaw to permit cannabis cultivation and processing in the industrial designation and select industrial zones. Notice was given in accordance with the Planning Act on March 11th, 2022. Anyone who wants notice of the passing of the official plan and zoning bylaw amendment to participate in any site plan process if applicable or preserve their opportunity to appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal shall either sign the sign-in sheets outside the council chamber or give notice to the city clerk immediately after today's public meeting. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Clerk. Now I'd like to ask our Director of Planning, uh, oh, no, oh, I'm sorry, are we gonna, we're doing the te team again? Okay, great. I would like to ask our planning staff to ex please explain the purpose and reason for the proposed amendments. Thank you, Mayor Diodani. So good evening, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, tonight's presentation is regarding city-initiated official plan, zoning bylaw, and site plan control bylaw amendments for cannabis policies and regulations within the city. So just as, uh, I guess to let you know what I just handed out there, it's uh, a map that's gonna be included in the presentation. I just figured it would be more handy to have it uh, in your hands for tonight. And if there's anybody who wants a copy, there's there's more available on the bench there. Um, So what is affected by the proposed amendments? First, cannabis will only be permitted in the industrial designations and in specific industrial zones as of right, meaning that it won't need an official plan amendment or zoning bylaw amendment um, for approval subject to specific criteria as outlined in the policies and regulations. Um, second, the proposed amendments apply to licensed cannabis production facilities, which are regulated by the federal government and the, the designated medical growth of cannabis, uh, whose certificates are issued by Health Canada that yeah. permit one person to grow up to, Thanks. for up to four people. Um, please note that these proposed amendments do not regulate the growth of four cannabis plants for personal use. So here I've got a chart that details what's currently in our official plan for cannabis uses versus what the proposed amendments contain. So permit, currently it's permitted in the industrial and agricultural designations. Um, and the proposed OPA will permit it in industrial designations and permit indoor cultivation operations in the agricultural designation with an amendment to the official plan subject to, site, uh, to specific criteria. Currently there's no policy surrounding cannabis use and proposed um, as the following criteria, which is being in accordance with federal cannabis regulations being indoors with appropriate infiltration and ensuring no emissions of odor, being subject to site plan control, and this process may require uh, air quality study, lighting plans, et cetera, to mitigate nuisance. It must be 500 meters from sensitive land uses, and these include residential and institutional uses, licensed campgrounds, daycare facilities, schools, parks and trails, and that no outdoor cultivation is permitted. Currently, it's not explicitly subject to site plan control in our official plan, and the proposed amendment will have it explicitly subject to site plan control, where the city can request security access features, air quality filtration, lighting emissions, etc. So here I have a chart for the current versus proposed uh, zoning. So currently, it's not listed as a permitted use in any zone. Um, the proposed amendments will permit it in the general and heavy industrial zones and cultivation can be permitted in the agricultural zones with approval of an official plan and zoning bylaw amendment. A definition uh, for medical marijuana facility and sensitive land use is currently in our zoning and proposed will be a definition for licensed cannabis production facility, designated medical growth of cannabis and sensitive land use. Currently there's no regulations or minimum setback requirements in our zoning and the proposal uh, would require any cannabis use to be wholly enclosed in a building that's not a residence with the appropriate air infiltration, have no outdoor cultivation, be 500 meters from sensitive land uses, and as mentioned earlier, uh, these include residential and institutional uses, licensed campgrounds, daycare facilities, schools, parks and trails, not have outdoor storage, and not emit any cannabis odors outside of a building. For site plan control, uh, the amendment proposes to have all cannabis facilities, cultivation and project, 
production subject to site plan control process. Through the site plan control, the city planning staff would have the authority to ask for documents such again as air quality studying, studies, lighting plans, etc., to mitigate use, use, uh, nuisance. Please note that site plan control is a technical process and it's not a public process. So uh, planning staff held an open house on March 8th. Some comments we received and concerns from the residents were for road deterioration in the agricultural area as well as well water concerns um, and odor concerns. These can all be dealt with through the site plan control process. Um, there were concerns about crime and staff provide that it's easier to control and monitor activities with legal facilities rather than illegal facilities. Um, there were comments about prohibiting cannabis in the agricultural area altogether. Um, this isn't recommended by staff as mitigation has been built into the proposed policies before you tonight. Um, SGL, who were the consultants for the cannabis uh, for the city, noted that prohibition of cannabis growing in the agricultural area may be challenged under the definition for normal farm practices with OMAFRA. Uh, so some residents supported the 500 meter setback um, and some said that they didn't believe it was enough of a setback. The consultants recommended a 150 meter setback, which was increased to 500 meters at council's direction. We also received concerns about property values. So a background study that was done by the consultants did not reveal a positive or negative impact to neighboring property values near cannabis facilities. Um, additional comments were received after the open house, which have been dealt with in Appendix A of the report. So this is a map that shows where cannabis would be permitted as of right, again, meeting without the need for an official plan and zoning bylaw amendment, provided that they meet the specific criteria that we went over earlier. So just a couple areas of note. Um, in the center of Niagara Falls, you can see some general industrial zone land where it would be permitted as of right. To the west of that, there's some heavy industrial zone land where it would be permitted as of right. And then south of the Welland River, um, in Willoughby, there's an industri some industrial zone land there, and then at the very southeast corner of Niagara Falls. I do just want to mention that the um, industrial zone land in Willoughby, directly south of the Welland River, it does have some environmental constraints associated with it. Um, so the chances of, of it being, they'd have to navigate the environmental constraints before they could uh, potentially have something there. Uh, so staff's recommendation is that counts, council approve the draft amendments as detailed in schedules three to eight of staff report PBD 2022-019. Thank you. Any questions of Councilor? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you very much for that. Appreciate that, uh, Alexa. Any questions of council? I've got Councilor Campbell up first. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, at the very beginning, uh, it says cannabis will only be permitted in industrial designations and in specific industrial zones as, a, as of right. The proposed amendment amendments apply to license blah, blah, blah. Can, uh, number three, facilities will be subject to regulations and so on. And then the proposed OPA allows for indoor cultivation could be permitted in agriculture de designations. As far as I'm concerned, it should never happen other than in an industrial situation. And having this in, based on my experience as a council member, it's the door opening. We mentioned it in the proposal, it's there to be opened. I don't think there should be made any reference whatsoever to uh, agricultural use and uh, growth of marijuana. Thank you for that. Any other, uh, Councilor Lococo? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a question and I'll comment later after we hear all the speakers. Maybe through you to, is it Ms. Hannah? Alexa. Alexa, sorry, yeah, it's hard okay. to tell because I've seen you on screen, but you're so far away. Sorry, Alexa. No worries. Could you please review the medical designation and how that is affected? So, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, the same policies would apply to medical as it would to um, for growing for recreational 
purposes, as in uh, a cannabis uh, facility operation. Through the mayor to, to the presenter then, so say if someone has a license to grow for someone else, say if they're growing for two people, what do they need to do, what can't they do? I'm, I'm a little fuzzy on this. So through you, Mr. Mayor, um, it would depend on where they're locating. Uh, they need to either, if they don't want to go through an amendment process, they need to find either the general industrial or heavy industrial uh, zone land, and then they would need to meet the site-specific criteria outlined in the proposed zoning bylaw amendment. So just to confirm what I understand, if someone is already a licensed designated grower, they cannot do it where they're doing it right now unless they fit in these new outlines? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, that's, if they're already growing and they're already legalized, um, they could obtain legal non-conforming status. Um, but that would be assuming that they're already a legal operating facility. Okay, through, through the mayor, do you have to be in a facility right now to be a designated medical grower? Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, I believe that's in the details of their medical growing permit. Um, I believe all, most of them are inside. I'm not sure if uh, Ms. Dolch has anything further to add on that. Ms. Dolch, do you have anything further to add to that? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Through you to the Councillor. Uh, no, I don't have any details, but I can say that um, obviously if they are operating currently and they've got legal license and they went through the city in accordance with the zoning bylaws and did get permissions, they would be uh, grandfathered or they'd be considered a legal non-conforming use. Uh, I'd have to know the specific example in order to review it, um, whether or not they would qualify though for legal non-conforming under our bylaw. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I, I just wanted to bring this up because there are some issues with people who have a legal license now to grow and they're afraid of this policy changing what they would have to do moving forward. So I wanted to confirm about grandfathering or do, um, do they have to get a new license. So I'll, I'll bring up my comments later on, but that was my question right now. Okay. Thank you for that. Any other questions of council for staff? Seeing none, okay. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Councillor Iannone? No? Well, who are we pointing at? Oh, I thought that she had her hand up. Okay. <laughs> okay, now members of the public are advised that failure to make an oral mm. or written submission at this public meeting, is this a, a OLT thing? Yeah. Could result in the Ontario Land Tribunal dismissing any referral it receives. Failure to notify the city clerk to preserve their opportunity to appeal will result in staff rejecting an appeal as per section 3419 of the Planning Act. Now, Mr. Clerk, do we have anyone who wishes to speak? Uh, yes, Your Worship, we have one resident who had registered to speak to this matter. Uh, his name is Clark Bitter, and I believe he's standing by here on Zoom. Give him a moment to connect. Okay, sure. Mr. Bitter, let us know once you're connected. I'm connected. Okay, Mr. great. Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. Okay, great. We can hear you. So if you could state your, your name and your address just for the record, and then uh, then fire away. My name is Clark Bitter. Um, may I just say that I'm a resident of Niagara Falls rather than give my exact address, which okay. I believe uh, the clerk does have. Uh, okay, all right. The clerk acknowledges we do have his address. So, okay, we're all set. Thank, thank you. you for that. So, um, I know I only have eight minutes, but I'd like to address this in two parts. Um, the first would be the medical designated grower portion. And uh, for that, I'd like to give you just a little bit of history as to how this came about as a thing in Canada. Um, as a result of a ruling where four people sued the federal government of Canada for their medical marijuana regulations, there was a ruling handed down by the federal court on February 24th, 2016 of Allard versus Her Majesty the Queen in Right of Canada, federal court case 236. It declared that the medical, uh, the marijuana for medical purposes regulations known as MMPR, they were unconstitutional under section seven of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. It did this because they restricted the, um, 
access to medical marijuana, thereby, thereby violating the rights, the rights to liberty and security of the person who was prescribed this as a medication. The government argued that um, under this old regulations that they had, they had replaced it with the licensed producers that you know now today, Canopy, Tweed, Aurora, etc. They made it obligatory for patients to purchase from them. The reasons for this and the things that they used in their arguments with the federal court were that there was a problem with security, there were negative impacts on public health, there were things such as there was safety and security arising from the growth of medical marijuana in residential homes. In the years leading up to the MMPR, local governments, including this council, sent letters in support and police forces, including the Niagara Regional Police, advising the federal government that the growth of medical marijuana in residential homes contributed to a number of issues, including unsafe building alterations, the use of dangerous goods, um, fire code violations, the growth of mold and fungus, the emissions of unwanted odors, and the diversion of marijuana to the black market. All things that this council has considered as reasons for these new restrictive bylaws. However, the federal government argued these things and the court ruled that there was no justification for the imposition of the new medical marijuana regime and that the negative impacts on public health, safety, security alleged by the federal government either did not exist or, rem or were remedial. And they didn't justify these restrictive laws. So, under your regulation, when it comes to a designated grower, which was created as a result of the Supreme Court failing to recognize the government's right to appeal this ruling, your bylaw basically reimposes the restrictions on those medical growers. I will be challenging this. I spoke today with John Conroy's associate named Jack Loy, who is the lawyer who defended this at the Supreme Court of Canada and is the president of Normal Canada. And they agreed with me that this violates my charter rights as a, as a citizen and that it restricts me to the point where the cost, which is the main thing of my medicine, should I be unable to grow again, would rise to the same or above the cost of purchasing it from a medical um, licensed grower. So therefore, you would then be in violation of the federal court ruling on 263 if you impose this bylaw, and it would be grounds to appeal that. Now, with that said, I also would like to speak to you about the economic impacts of cannabis growing in, in Canada, as put out by Deloitte in a recent report, where they showed that cannabis has contributed in billions of dollars, 40, sorry, in, in Ontario alone, $13.3 billion to our GDP with a labor income of $8 billion. None of these labor jobs are here in Niagara Falls. None of them. There's 151,000 jobs in Canada. None of them are in Niagara Falls. And this is because of this city's council's continued rejection of this industry. It is a legal industry. It contributes $43.5 billion dollars over the last three years to the Canadian GDP. For comparison, the wine industry in Canada contributes 6.5 to $8 billion annually. That is less than half of the cannabis industry after only three years. By saying, by imposing these new laws and these extremely restrictive laws, which your own counts, uh, consultants say violate the Farm Protection Act, you, you are basically telling us citizens of this city that we don't deserve these jobs, that we don't have a right to these jobs because it might smell bad for a short period of time. By restricting the outdoor growth of cannabis, you are also restricting, you're, you're imposing 
on the producers of it the fact that they will have to produce odor year round. Outdoor cannabis only produces an odor at the end of the flowering season and it, it doesn't impose it the rest of the year. The 500 meter setback that you proposed is also contrary to the federal government who have been given 100% jurisdiction over this as a result of the Allard ruling. Their setback is 150 meters. No other municipality has even attempted a 500 meter setback. Again, all of your reasons behind this are based on facts that are not facts and have been deemed as such by the Supreme Court of Canada to have no evidence that support them. These arguments were given by the federal government to the court. And I, I, I can tell you, the federal government probably had better lawyers and they still lost. I, I know that in the future, this may cost our city quite a bit in court fees because of um, st stigmas. Is, I can't think of any other reason. Um, there's, there's mostly anecdotal stories. There was a lot of stuff I've seen on factual things, such as uh, people claiming that THC would get into the water table if it was growing outdoors. Well, THC is not a water soluble product. It could never enter our water table. Um, cannabis does not produce a pollen. So therefore, there's no release of pollen. So there's no risk of an allergen as the same way there is with most agricultural products. I would just like, I think council should reconsider, maybe dig a little deeper. Um, I've, I've spoken to you many, many times and on an individual basis, some of you, and I, I plead with you not to impose these unconstitutional restrictions and violations of the charter rights of patients and imposing accelerated and extreme costs on people in order to gain medicine and access fair access to their medicine. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Bitter. Are there any questions of... Okay. Okay, uh, maybe we can ask our staff, so uh, either or, if they'd like to reply to some of the comments from the speaker. Uh, maybe we can start uh, with you. Alex, I'll, okay. I'll uh, start right, first, we'll thank you. Ms. Dolch. Thank you, Mayor, through you to the Councillor. So I can comment on a couple of things. Obviously, we, we've advised um, about restricting it in the agricultural area in terms of um, the non um, and the normal farming practices. Uh, I will caution you on that. Only the way we've set it up and the way the consultants recommended it, it still does require an official plan and zoning bylaw amendment. It does still require approval of council. We have set out criteria, so we're not necessarily prohibiting it from making an application to apply, uh, but we are providing some criteria that they can consider to, to do that. Um, in terms of the comments on the federal government, the federal government does uh, speak to the fact that municipalities can consider zoning uh, um, in this process, so uh, that's something that's being done now through us. Um, so that's something I don't think um, we do have the ability to do. In terms of the 150 meter setback um, and that no other municipality goes beyond, I, I'm not sure that that is necessarily correct. There are some municipalities that have gone beyond, whether they're successful or not. Uh, I do know the Niagara on the Lake uh, bylaw has, has proposed 600 meters. Obviously, they're probably the furthest that I'm aware of in the Niagara region. Um, so there is that as well. I just wanted to note. Um, and I think I've covered most of it in terms, like I said, in terms of the federal government. We are allowed to to um, consider zoning at a municipal level and there is a document providing municipal guidance on zoning um, that the that was released so it does talk about that municipalities do have the ability to regulate uh, those kind of things that um, create cannabis or create impacts to cannabis and and the concern from a planning perspective obviously and, and why we're doing this exercise is that um, it's the nuisance, the negative uh, impacts associated with cannabis, odor being one of them. Uh, similar to any industrial facility or any other farm practice, uh, there are odor impacts. Unfortunately, the province has not yet put in place minimum distance separation formulas for cannabis where it kind of gives us some guidance on where these cannabis facilities can locate. So we don't have that ability. 
unlike other farming practices such as pig farming, things like that. That's where we find out um, how many pigs you have, where you store your manure, all those things that create an odor impact to those residents or, or abutting properties, that's something that the, the province guides us on. In this case, we don't have that ability. They haven't come out with that yet. So um, obviously our consultants have done the best, giving you the best recommendation they have. We've provided our recommendation um, and that's something you'd have, you'll have to weigh further. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for that, Ms. Tolich. Uh, yes, Councillor Coco. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This report has a lot of recommendations and I can see that some people agree with some of them, some people don't agree with other ones. The way it's written, it's either yes, we agree with the report or no, we don't agree with the report. So I'm wondering if we can break them down into separate motions. Like the, the first one would be um, to accept the heavy in general as of right. The second one would be the prestige development holding and uh, light with the bylaw they're all in the report, I'm just breaking them down. The third one would be agricultural indoor with a site plan. The fourth one would be no outdoor agricultural. And then the fifth one would be the 500 meter separation. And I think if we go through it that way, we'd, we'd be able to say yes and no to different ones and then come up with something because it is legal in in Canada, we do have to come up with something. The way the report is with all the recommendations, a lot of work has gone into this, I understand. But if we say yes, then we have to accept everything. Or if we say no, we're not get accepting anything. So if we could break them down, talk about them, and then vote on them individually, maybe that would be a little bit better. Okay, thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, okay, uh, just before I go move on, um, your thoughts on doing it this way? Uh, I think we should, uh, you should look to council for any other questions and then when the public meeting is closed, uh, perhaps we could uh, break them down. Okay. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Kerry. Thank you, Your Worship. Just a comment on the, uh, on the uh, speaker. Uh, we're down this road for a specific reason and it's not because this was being driven by council. It was because of the overwhelming objections from residents, they either filled this council chamber, filled our computers with emails, or filled our telephone calls, our phones with telephone calls, objecting every time it came up. That's why we're here today, not because the council decided, woke up one day and decided we're gonna take on this fight. It was the residents, Your Worship, and we're trying to do what the residents have overwhelmingly told us they want us to do and not have to face uh, the uh, marijuana in their area. So that's why we're here. Okay. Thank you for that. Councillor Dabrowski. Actually, just to Councillor Kerrio's point to the speaker, I, I heard the word that this council's rejected cannabis. That's not the case at all. Two or three years ago when the province said either we want the, the retail operations in our city or we don't, we welcomed it. And I think we've probably opened over 15 or 20 cannabis retail mm -hmm. stores in the municipality. So it's not that we're against it. Just again, to Councillor Kerrio's point, I've talked to probably 200 residents over the past two or three years who don't want this in their backyard. So just to tackle Councillor Kerrio's comments, and, and that's what I've heard for the past two years. Residents, whether they live in neighborhoods, rural, they don't want it in their backyard. So um, Councillor Lacoco alluded to it, we do have to make a decision. But uh, based on what I've heard over the past two years, um, residents don't want growth operations, whether it be indoor or outdoor, in their neighborhoods or backyards or in the municipality. So I just wanted to, to make that point. Thank you for that. Councillor Peter Angelo. Yeah, and just to further that, not only is it the cannabis shops that we've accepted, but we also have an extraction plant in our industrial zone, Your Worship. So mm -hmm. Council did approve that as well. Mm -hmm. So we do. We allow retails and production. It's the outdoor growing that the, that's a concern with the residents. Okay, so do we have uh, any other questions of Council at this point? Uh, Councillor Strange. Yes, I just want to make it clear, and I don't know whether our planner or Alexa can just confirm with everybody that may be watching, um, that it is a legal right to grow four cannabis plants per year in your residential uh, lot or house, in your house, just so people realize that, that we're not turning down or making an amendment to that, um, that they are allowed four plants, and I don't know how much that would add up to in a, in a year. Lots, Wayne. 
yeah. looking for the expert. Yeah. So you know, it's just it's not that we're not allowing it. We're it is a, a, as of right to grow four cannabis plants in your residential yard or home every year. Yeah, three. Through you, Mr. Mayor, that's correct. Four plants for personal use can be grown on, on your property. Yep, so it's this good for it. clarity. That's not what's uh, being debated here today. Yes, I just want to make that clear. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if somebody does smoke marijuana and would like to grow marijuana and it's for personal use, I don't know how much more you would need than four plants per year, and I don't know if that adds that up, but it seems like it's quite a bit. Per person. Per person. Yeah, well, clarity, I, I don't even, is it four plants per year or four plants at any one time? It's four plants at any one time. So you, could, you can have a harvest of 20 plants, depending if you grow indoor, outdoor. Oh, I'm not an expert. But. Sorry, it's it's four individual plants on your property at any one time. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if there's no further questions or comments, because I'm getting ready to to close the public meeting. Okay. The public meeting with respect to the proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendment is now concluded. What's the direction of council? Yes, Councillor Lococo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I know we've all gone through pages and pages of information through the consultants, extra material. There's a lot of information here. Um, as I said, I would suggest going through them individually, mm -hmm. but here's some of my concerns. Um, the first issue is protecting our residents. They live in a residential neighborhood. They want to enjoy their residential rights within their own, so we have to protect them um, and mitigate it as much as we can. It is legal, so we have to figure out how we can do both. One of the concerns I do have is the enforcement. The report goes on to say that, yes, it's enforceable, but when you look at it, it has to go through the court process. So if there's a complaint made about a specific um, grow facility, then we, um, our bylaw has to go through collecting evidence, there has to go through the court. That could take a long period of time. And then our residents are dealing through all of those issues as we're getting to that court process. So as long as we understand that, that's good. Um, the 500 meters, our consultant said 150. There are some that have gone in between up to uh, 500. I know we talked about moving it to 500. Um, I myself personally think that 500 is too much um, through our, our report and our, um, our, our planner. If you make it that it's impossible to grow, that could be um, a reason for appeal. And quite often at this table we hear about, well, if we don't approve something, it's going to go to the OLT. Having it 500 meters could be a reason for appeal. There is one in the appeal stage right now. It's still in court, so we don't know what that is, but um, I'm thinking 500 is, is too much. 150, I think, is too little. I'd like to go in between. I talked about the in, um, enforcement. The other issue I have is about that um, marijuana is an agricultural crop. So if we look at the agricultural options that we have, we have indoor with a zoning bylaw, or the recommendation is no outdoor in agricultural. If, we're, if we put no agricultural all, at all, that would be a reason for an OLT appeal. If we put indoor with a zoning bylaw, at least we've done something and we can try to figure out all of the, the issues that going through the zoning bylaw through our staff. They would have a, a list of things that they would be looking at, the mitigation for light and, and, and noise and, and fencing and security and all of that. And the last one um, I just want to bring up again is the medical. So as long as we're, we're sure whatever we're doing is not erasing the medical licenses that are already in, in place and that they're grandfathered. And I know Ms. Dolch said she'd have to know specifically where it is, and I can't tell you that. I, don't, I wasn't given specifics, but I was given the, the, the reason to look into it. So those are my concerns. So um, I would like to put a motion forward that we break the recommendations down as they are in the report, but individually instead of one. Okay, well, we could probably, I don't even think we need a motion to do that. I don't know, Mr. Clerk, how would you recommend the best way to do this? We'll go point by point. Sure. We can do it like that. So uh, did you want to kind of walk us through it and then uh, I'll conduct the votes? Well, uh, I suggest then that the councillor lead us through that uh, one motion at a time. I think uh, she likely has that in front of her. So if she wants to bring forward the first motion and we'll see if uh, you can call for a seconder and we'll, we'll vote on one at a time. Okay, councillor, are you prepared to do that? 
I have it in general, I didn't write it all out, but the first motion would be um, to accept heavy in industrial and general industrial as of right, which is exactly in the report. Okay, that's uh, moved by Councillor the Coco, second by Councillor Peter Angelo. You want to speak to it? Yeah. I guess my question is, and I, I'm not opposed to it as of right in H, I, and G. I have said that all along. Um, but would there not have to be a separation distance attached to it? I mean, it would seem, uh, I guess, um, not proper if you don't approve a separation distance with the actual recommendation. If separately you're approving a separation distance uh, and then that gets appealed, then that would apply to everything. So. I mean, there would have to be a separation distance uh, recommended in the actual recommendation, I would think. And I'm in favor of 500 meters, so if it's not 500 meters, then I'm not going to second it. Okay, yes, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I think that's correct. Maybe we should put the separation distance first and then deal with the other ones. I'm, I'm fine with that. So my motion um, would be that we go at 350 meters instead of the 500. Okay, do we have a second for 350 meters? I'll second that. Okay, Councillor. Can I just speak to it? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, I voted against uh, the 500 meters when it came to us before. I, I think when, when the 500 meters was discussed, it was a very lengthy discussion um, that night. But I think it's going to make it prohibitive to find a place in an industrial zone to do it and, and without it looking like we're trying to be prohibitive. I even think 350 is too big, but it seems to be to be a uh, good compromise. Okay, so we've got a motion by Councillor Lococo, second by Councillor Iannone that we have a 350 meter setback. We got Councillor Peter Angelo and then Cario. Yeah, thanks, Your Worship. And I'm just going to say, I mean, I can't support the motion. I know we've all stood up and said that we want to support our residents. Um, I, I don't know that, you know, supporting them means that we do something that isn't the maximum when it comes to separation distance. I, I think when we had the consultant here that night, we asked, what's the minimum, what's the maximum? I think the minimum that a municipality has decided on was, I, I believe they said 75 meters. Um, I could be wrong, but I thought they said 75 to 600. And then when we asked them who did 600, they said Niagara on the Lake. So our own neighboring municipality has done 600 meters, and we're going to do half of that? I, I don't really see that that has anything to do with protecting the residents like they're asking us to do. So I, I, I can't support the motion, Your Worship. Okay, thank you. I've got Councilor Cario and then Iannone. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I, we had a lengthy discussion on this, and there is properties that are available even if we put the 500. I won't support any distance except 500, unless it was 600. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Iannone. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I thought the point of us putting it in industrial was so that it didn't affect residential areas. They're not, we're not affecting residents. That is a, a vast overstatement. If we move it to 350, zoned in an industrial zone, we're not affecting the residents of Niagara Falls. We've already moved it out of the, any ability for it to be rural, limited it for residents' backyards. So I think it's a little bit of an overreach to say that 350 meters is gonna affect the residents. We don't have anybody living in that area. Okay, thank you. Pardon me? Well, that motion, I believe, well, maybe we can get clarification for Council Coco. Are we talking just industrial? Well, originally I started with industrial, but then it was said, well, maybe we should come up with um, the distance first. So now we've gone to the distance and we haven't even gone through general heavy prestige agriculture. We haven't done that yet. We're just doing the, the distance so because the like distance it, was the same thing for so, all of them. So it seems it'll matter. Maybe we should have started with uh, where because it's going to matter because of its uh, agricultural, um, which Councilor Inouye is saying this is industrial. We need to know what the intention is, right? Okay. So, so because obviously... Well, the, the report didn't distinguish between it either. The, it said 500 per our instructions for all of it. It didn't distinguish between either. It was 500. I, I think the intention, though, is to dis distinguish, I believe, if I'm hearing correctly. Okay, well, we can do that. Before we do that, I was wondering if we can go back to Ms. Dalt and if she can comment on the reasoning why 500 might be more difficult. Uh, if it was we, to go out to OLT? But to be clear though, are we talking about 500 
in agricultural or in industrial? In general, because it wasn't specified in the report, it was 500 for everything. So if, if Ms. Dolch would like to comment on industrial and agricultural, but it wasn't specified in the yep. report that okay. way. Okay, we can get uh, Ms. Dolch if you want to comment. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to the Councillor. Um, so in terms of the 500 meter distance, uh, that's something Council recommended. Uh, I, where the number came from, I don't know, but generally um, right now we've recommended, our consultants have recommended 150 meters just based on the study work they did. So um, they've looked at some science behind that number and why people were recommending the 150, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean 500 is incorrect either. I just, I don't have any science behind it to give you any recommendations to 500. Thank you for that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. If we would like, the motion can be amended to, we can go a distance with Heavy in general as of right, and then we'll go through the rest of them with a distance as well then, so, if that would be easier. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, can, you, can you say that again? Uh, with the distance, so for, first I was going to say Heavy in general, but then it was suggested do the distance. So now I think what we need to do based on the comments is a distance on heavy and a uh, heavy and general industrial. Okay. So, um, I, I since my my motion was 350, let's start with 350 heavy and heavy and general as of right. So uh, you're saying 350 meter setback in industrial. The mean? two, because there's there's five, two of them are as of right, three of them are through bylaw zone amendments. So that would be the next one. So this one is the as of right, and it's heavy in general only. Okay. Uh, Councilor Peter Angelo, you want to ask about this? Yeah, Your Worship, just a question. I, I don't understand why the actual zone would matter. Um, what does it matter if I live in the agricultural zone or if I live close to heavy industrial or general industrial? If I'm 350 meters away, I want to be 500 meters away from it minimum. I mean, I don't understand why the actual zone matters. It's the separation, really, that matters. That's what I think we need to decide on first. Where is the majority of council in terms of the separation distance from sensitive uses? Councillor? I'm sorry, that's where I thought we were on the second part. So the first part of what I asked was to do heavy in general. Then it was suggested, no, we should do distance. So then I said 350. Then the comment was, well, we, is that 350 on industrial or agricultural? So that's why I broke it up. If we're back to just the distance and that would be for everything, yeah. I'm happy to do that too. Because that's where that's, I started. It seems that's where we're at. So okay. maybe you want to go back to so that. So let's again. start over. The, um, the first. I, can I just say I am so confused and I'm the seconder. Okay. There's a motion on the floor. Okay, so are you withdrawing that? I'm withdrawing that okay. motion, and now the motion, which was my original motion, that we do a 350 meter separation. Councillor Iannone seconded it the first time, and then we'll vote on it. If it doesn't go through, someone else can put a motion for a, a distant separation, and then we can go through the different uh, zoning. Okay. Does that make sense? Uh, it does. I understand what it means. Um, and Councillor Inouye, are you seconding that motion? Yes. And, 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 and I just want to go back to a comment that Councillor Peter Angelo said. A sensitive use is resi residential and institutional zones, licensed campgrounds, child care facilities, schools and trails and lands. If you are designating it into an industrial land, you are nowhere. Uh, if I'm picturing it right, None of those are anywhere close to 350 meters from the industrial zone. And quite frankly, I, 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 my, I have a bigger concern on us not being able to, not allowing it to be agricultural. Uh, Councillor Campbell said he wants, he likes that word right out of it. It is agricultural. We don't have to like it. Residents don't have to like it. But the fact is, it is an agricultural prop. So, uh, in, in regards, and I'll second this motion, but I think a lot of what Clark Bitter said was actually right on fact. It's just we don't like it. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Councillor Carrier. Well, I can't agree that with uh, Iannone or Councillor Iannone that she has no way of knowing whether there's a sensitive use unless someone's going to tell us that there's no sensitive uses next to any of the industrial areas we're talking about. I don't know how she would know that. And I, going back to that, how do you know that? I just want to say 
I'm going to well, go for 500 meters. I'm not going to go for any less. Let's vote on it. But I think it should be a distance for everything we talk about. Let's set the distance. That's what we talked about. And then the distance is over. It's whether it ends up 350, 4, 500, for everything. That's the distance. So, Councillor Coco, did you want us to move forward then on that vote? Call the vote, yes, please. Okay. So, was there, was there feedback? Okay, sure. The CAO is going to clarify some facts. Yeah, just give us one sec, Councillor. Yeah, sorry, through the mayor, and I, and I just want to make sure that uh, we're using the correct terminology and, and some of the facts are there. Uh, we just want to be clear that there are situations in Niagara Falls uh, where the distance separation between industrial and residential, which would be a sensitive use, is far more narrow than a couple hundred meters. That's right. uh, also, um, we just want to make sure that when we use the term as of right, it includes all the conditions that are listed there because sometimes people use as of right as just because you're in the zoning. So we just want to be very clear that when we use the term as of right, it includes all the conditions that planning has put in there. Yes, I agree. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, Councillor Ianoni. And thank you. That was the question I wanted to ask before Mr. Burgess stood up. What industrial areas would that separation, the 150 separation distance between the 350 and 500 affect the residential area? Uh, Ms. Dolch? I can give you, through you to the Councillor, I apologize. Um, I can give you one example. We have an application in right now on Carroll, Carroll Street. Avenue. Avenue, sorry, Carroll Avenue, uh, and that's right across from residential. It's right across the street. It's an industrial area, so so that is one example that we have right now uh, that does have a, a short separation distance. So, what is the application for? For this? For cannabis? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Carrier. Can I? No, the question was answered by the CAO. We don't know, and, and now we were just told that there is one. So I'll vote on the motion as it's presented. Okay, thank you. Okay. And I'll just vote. clarify, Mr. Mayor, as the CAO said, and like I said, I didn't have it all written out. It's with the, all of the recommendations. Um, I'm just labeling it that section of the report. Okay, thank you. So we have a motion by Councillor Lacoco, second by Councillor Iannone, that we have a 350 meter setback. Okay. Can I ask a question, please? Yes. Um, Ms. Dolch, does the 350 meter separation affect the Carroll Avenue? Would 350 meters not be enough to affect the residents? The, through you to the councillor, um, in terms of uh, Carroll Avenue, I'd have to measure it, but I, I, 350 meters would still impact them as well as it's right across the street. So if you put a 350 meter separation distance, again, their application, I'll be honest, is in now. So obviously anything you do tonight is, is not impacted on that. That's something that needs to be considered independently. Um, but if you put in a 350 meter uh, separation distance in that example, um, that cannabis facility would not be able to proceed if that was the case, if it came in after tonight's meeting. So what separation would allow that one to succeed? It would have to be 500? No, no, what she's saying, Councillor, is uh, it, if, if it's 350, it's going to be too close to residential, it can't be built. It'd have to be a smaller number for that one to be able to go forward, whatever it is, 100 meters or, there's houses right around it. Okay, yeah. I understand now, thank you. Okay, so is there Can any- Can I ask another question? Yes. Can the 350 meters be site specific? Um, because the 350 meters doesn't work for Carroll Avenue, but it would work for another industrial zone. Because we have industrial zones that are not abutting residential areas. If it's an industrial zone that abuts industrial in residential areas, can we can we do this site specific where if it is adjacent to a residential area, then it is 500? Because when you phrase it like that, Mr. Mayor, the 150 meters that was the initial recommendation makes no sense to me. So the question is, can we have site specific setbacks is what you're asking? Yeah, because the, the original, when you when you explain it like that on Carroll Avenue, the original recommendation, and, and I tried to stay along the 
the um, consultants report because I'm, I'm not the specialist in this. We made, we paid them. They did a good job. They recommended 150. I didn't under and 500 made no sense to me at the last meeting. But if in fact Carroll Avenue, 150 meters would greatly affect the residents. I don't know why that recommendation would have come to us in the first place for 150 meters. So if Councilor Peter Angelo and Cario want 500 in areas that it affects residential areas, Carroll Avenue being one, could we do it site specific for 500 meters in a resi that abuts a residential area, but 350 meters in an actual industrial area that doesn't abut a sensitive use? Because they don't all abut a sensitive use. Did, I make, did that make sense? No. Well, I just need it off to Ms. Dolch if it made sense. <laughs> <laughs> Through you to the councillor, thank you. Um, I, maybe there's a bit of confusion. So in terms of the separation distance, it's from residential uses, daycares, all those things. It's not necessarily the zone itself. Um, it's the actual use. So even if you're, you're in a... Uh, a different zone, but you have a residential use, the, the impact's the same. So we just, ha it is almost site specific to those uses. Um, and again, the concern is mitigating the impact to those uses. So you might have, for example, I don't know if you have one in Niagara Falls, but a daycare in, in close to the industrial area because some workers are there. That would, that would also impact it in an industrial area. Again, it's the use itself. It's mitigating those impacts to those sensitive uses that are all around the city, unfortunately. So it's not necessary one residential area versus another. It is a home located in an industrial area, maybe zone and designated industrial, but there's homes there and there's people enjoying their outdoor space and the smells would impact them. So that's where the separation doesn't necessarily apply to zones, it applies to the actual use of the properties. So if I go on that explanation, I don't understand then why the initial recommendation would have been 150 meters because if it's not and, and I and I tried to keep your 150 meters and the and the consultants. If it if there was no consideration given to the areas like Carroll Avenue, how could 150 meters be appropriate? Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to the Councillor. So in terms of Carroll Avenue, I just gave you an example um, just based on the questions you asked, but Carroll Avenue came in beforehand. We're not trying to make sure Carroll Avenue can happen. Um, this is something that was applied prior to the regulations that you're considering tonight. So obviously they'll be considered on its own merits. Whether or not Carroll Avenue moves forward is another question, whether or not Council approves that. Uh, so that's independent of this. This is a, a city-wide bylaw where we're considering where is it most appropriate Appropriate. Where are we going to mitigate impacts? The 150 meters is something that our consultant reviewed, considered um, what other municipalities did, um, considered some some more factual information they had. Um, again, 500, 350. Those are just numbers. I, I can't say you know numbers that people have chosen um, in terms of the science behind it. I don't know. There was, as I indicated before. Um, there was, the province did put out at one point in time uh, a recommendation that 500 meters was an appropriate setback. They put it on the environmental registry, um, but they have taken it, since taken it down. And uh, they did ask for comments at one point. They got a lot of feedback. Uh, they did remove that. Where that came from, that number, we did try to find out, uh, but generally it was just um, a number that they came up with, was what our consultant uh, followed up with. So really they're arbitrary numbers, but in terms of the 150, it's just historically what, um, where they felt the odor and some science behind how far odor would travel in, in those instances. In a building though, mind you, let me clarify, <laughs> our consultant made a recommendation only to be in a building with the 150 meter setback. Obviously if you, if you put it outdoors, the impact for odor, uh, it's really tough to say at this point. Okay, Councillor Ainoni, are you good? Thank you. My, I, yeah. Well, hang on a sec, Councillor Coco. I've got a few people oh, that, uh, that got their hands up. Councillor Cario, Councillor Campbell, and then Councillor DeBrosa. I, I was just going to ask the question of if everyone gets why we're doing a setback. It's to protect the sensitive uses. I just didn't, from the questions that are being asked or the discussion, I wasn't sure everybody understood why we were trying to do a setback. That's all. Thank you for that. Councillor Campbell? <clears throat> 
Thank you, Your Worship. I grew up in uh, Carroll Street area. 50 meters would still be, uh, wouldn't work. I mean, it'd be about 20 meters across the street. That's how close those uh, residential areas are. Right. Good to know. Uh, Councilor Dabrowski. Actually, I'm good already. Right. You're good? Oh. I think there's a motion uh, seconder, right? Yeah, yeah, we're gonna vote very shortly. Yes, Councilor Coco. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just one final comment. Um, St. Catharines just pa passed all of their bylaw about cannabis and they chose 150 meters. Um, I know Niagara on Lake was 600, so you can see that there's a wide variety. I just wanted to put that out there because that's a neighboring community as well. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, I think we beat this one. I think it's time we got to call the vote. So the motion is to have uh, 350 meter setbacks for the uh, cannabis. Okay, it's been moved, seconded. We'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, three, four, uh, and f uh, opposed, one, two, three, four. So that, that motion does not pass. Okay, yes, Councillor Kerry. I would move that we go back to the original suggestion, make it 500 meter setback. Okay, do you have a seconder? Councillor Campbell for a seconder. Okay, we have a motion by Councillor Kerry, seconded by Councillor Campbell, that we go to a 500 meter setback. Okay, we've already talked about this, so we're gonna call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, opposed? Okay, so three opposed. Okay, so that passes. Councillor Lacoca, we're gonna go to you. So the, the second one is the heavy industrial and general industrial as it's written in the report, loosely using the words as of right, but with all the conditions that the staff have put together. Okay, okay, and that's seconded by Councillor Peter Angelo. Okay, is there any discussions or questions to that one? Okay. Seeing none, let's call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, Councillor Inoni, you for, you're opposed? Okay, with uh, one opposed. Okay, Councillor Coco, you have the floor. The next one, uh, Mr. Mayor, is prestige, light, and development holding with a bylaw zoning amendment with the recommendations as listed in the report. Okay, do we have a second? Could you have this clerk read that again? Mr. Clerk? Um, maybe I could just have the, uh, the councillor, Councillor Lococo, confirm that uh, it's my belief that you're reading from page three of the report, uh, the bullet points that are listed there under the zoning bylaw amend amendments proposed to. Uh, am I correct? Yes, zoning bylaw amendment for cannabis cultivation and production in the prestige industrial, light industrial, and development holding zones. So, Councillor, if you go to page three yeah, uh, and you see the heading, the zoning bylaw amendments proposed to. Do it in light industrial, industrial. Yeah, it's a second bullet. So that's that's what Councillor uh, Lacoco has moved. So we're looking to see if we get a second on that. Do it, do it. Yes, Councillor Iannone. I'll second that. Okay, second by Councilor Iannone. Do you have, yes, Councilor Peter Angelo. Thanks, Your Worship. So just for clarification, is the motion to approve cannabis production in light industrial and prestige industrial areas? Yes. I thought we talked about this as a council before, and I thought we had said uh, numerous times that really light industrial, prestige industrial, because they were like right in the center of everything, it's really not where we wanted cannabis production to be. So I thought we already talked about that, Your Worship. But the motion that's on the floor now is to approve it in those areas? Well, just for clarity, yes, Councilor Lacoco. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Th that's what I thought as well. So I did speak with Ms. Dolch. I thought I was confused. But um, the idea behind the prestige, light, and development holding is with the zoning bylaw. So they, they can't just do it as of right. They have to fulfill a whole bunch of conditions. And that, that's what I understood because I specifically asked when we were talking about um, industrial, if you look at the map that was just handed out, it only has general and heavy. And I just thought we were doing general and heavy. But that's not what the, the planning department is, um, is advising. They're advising the other three with the zoning bylaw amendment. So I, I thought the same thing and that, so I'm bringing up the motion for that. Okay, I didn't know about this map, by the way. I didn't get one, and the clerk didn't get one either, so I'm not sure. Can we put them there? Oh, okay. All right. Good to know about the map. Thank you. Um, 
Okay, uh, Councilor Peter Angelo. Yeah, thanks, Your Worship. Um, I guess I'll just comment first. I think we need to be careful when we say that it's going to be subject to a ZBLA, a zoning bylaw amendment, because I mean that ZBLA is going to have requirements on it, and if a if an applicant is able to satisfy those requirements, there really isn't any good reason for staff to give that applicant a negative recommendation or for council to turn that application down. So it's fine to say that there's going to be requirements, but we really need to be cautious. I mean, because if we don't want it in LI and PI, but then we allow it through a ZBLA with requirements, we really have to be cognizant of the fact that if an applicant comes in and meets those requirements, mm -hmm. eventually they're gonna be able to operate there. So I thought we talked about restricting it, leaving it out of LI and PI. That's what I'm in favor of, so I'll just vote against the motion, Your Worship. Okay. So, and we've already approved heavy in general. Yes. Industrial. industrial. Okay. Any other questions or comments on the motion that's on the floor? Okay, so the motion is to permit it in, just so uh, um, Councilor Coco, permit it in light industrial, prestige industrial, and development holding zones. Is that right? Yes, it is. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I just want to ask. Can I vote against a motion I put forward? I only divided it up for discussion purposes. It didn't mean that oh. I was <laughs> in favor of or opposed not, to them. I just broke them down. No. Okay, can, um, I, I brought it this way because it was in the report. That's why I put them in the five different Well, why don't you just turn it around and just say you vote uh, that we don't allow it in those areas if that's how you feel. Okay, I can do that. Um, so I would oppose not having the in prestige light and development holdings with the bylaw zone amendment. Okay. Wait, you would oppose not having it? I oppose it. Yes, there is a difference. I'm sorry. I do not want them in prestige light and development holding with a bylaw zone amendment. Okay. Got it. That's clear. All right. Yep. Okay. Councilor Coke, Iononi? I'll second that. But I also have a question. Do you have a map that you're looking for? Is there a map that you want to see? No, it's not really. It's not very helpful. I don't have a map. No. No, it doesn't show light industrial on it. It only it doesn't help. It's the, not very helpful. The map that we have is in the package. It's very small though. You're right. Um, it's the same map. Yeah. 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 Same map that's in our council agenda. Right. Okay. Okay. So we have motion by Council of Coco, second by Councilor Iononi that not we do not, not allow the cannabis in prestige industrial, light industrial, and development holdings. Okay, uh, yes, Councillor. Uh, well, Kerry. I'm going to support that motion, Your Worship, because light industrial and prestige industrial is very close to residential. Yeah. A lot of times it's a buffer between things uh, and, and residential, so I'll obviously support not to have it there. Thank you. Okay, if there's no further discussion, we'll call the vote. All those in favor of the motion? Okay, opposed? Okay, we have one opposed. One opposed. Okay, next uh, on the docket, Councillor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The next one is regarding agricultural indoor as written in the report um, with a site plan. And I'm putting the motion forward to accept the recommendations within the report to have it in an in agricultural indoor only with a site plan per the, the recommendations in the report. So the recommendation. Okay, so um, now that would be indoor in heavy and general no. Agricultural. agricultural. Oh, in agricultural, indoor. Indoor, agricultural with a site plan. So okay. they have to go through roads, where are you getting your water, Does, do the roads need to be repaired, uh, are there creeks nearby, all, all of that kind of stuff. And that would probably, I'm guessing, be the 500 meter setback as well yes. for that. Yes, everything is the 500 yeah. meter setback. Okay, got it. Um, yes. Again. I'm sorry? <laughs> Okay, second by Councillor Iannone. Councillor uh, Cario and then uh, Peter uh, Angelo. Um, Councillor didn't say it, but that it would require a zoning bylaw amendment as well. That's the third bullet. Would require a zoning bylaw amendment, right? Correct, yes, okay. as the recommendation. Yes, Councillor uh, Peter Angelo and then Campbell. And just, I guess, another layer on top of that. I think that in the report it talks about in the agricultural zone, not just the ZBLA, but also an OPA. There's an official plan amendment that is required if anyone wants to operate a cannabis facility in the agricultural zone. 
And Your Worship, this is the one that I really have a hard time with, to be honest with you, um, because this is the one that we've we heard the most people comment on, yeah. to be honest yeah. with you. Um, it really gets hard because, you know, they bring up issues that um, would only affect the agricultural zone that, that don't affect cannabis facilities if they do operate in an industrial zone, you know, whether it be the, the issues of security and fencing and, and, you know, as people state to us, you know, they don't want to, um, they don't want to have that as a neighbor, you know, even if there is a separation distance there. Um, you know, the issues of lighting, the issues of the trucks going up and down the road because you're now taking, you know, land that's in the agricultural area and you're basically converting it to commercial. That's what you're doing and there's a lot of trucks that go up and down the road. The level of water that is required and that's typically a lot of times why the trucks are going up and down the road. So I, I've often said, as I know others around the table have, that you know it would be my preference to not have it in the agricultural zone and only allow it in HI and GI areas. Okay. Thank you for that. I got Councillor Campbell, then Cario, and then I, uh, Lococo. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, as I said initially, I'm opposed to the agricultural inclusion. We have no idea what's going to happen at as, as a result of us passing this bylaw tonight. If we just restrict it to the industrial areas and they come back to us and state make, make a sale to us with respect to expansion, we can deal with that then. But if we put it in the bylaw tonight, then it's there. It's the door opening door situation. And I'm opposed to that. It, it can be changed at two years down the road, three years down the road, until we have the experience of what actually happens in the industrial situation. Okay, thank you for that. Councilor Kerry. Well, Your Worship, I've stated every time I'm opposed to this as well. This is the bullet that all the people showed up to all the meetings about. They don't want it in the agricultural, so I'm not gonna support it. Okay. Thank you, and Councilor Coco. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The reason why I put this motion forward was because if we don't allow it in indoor, and then we don't allow outdoor, we've completely not allowed it in agricultural, and then that's when it's going to go to the OLT, and there's going to be, it could, but we keep on talking about, you know, if we don't do this and it goes to the LOLT, we're, we're costing taxpayers money. It is an agricultural crop. It is an agricultural crop. So if we don't allow it at all, we're going to have problems. So I was looking at it as a compromise to say, yes, we could have it indoors, and then we'll get to the outdoors next, which I don't agree with having it outdoors. Um, but at least with this way, we can go through all of the um, list of things that need to be done, looking at water, looking at roads, looking at lights. They have to um, give a mitigation plan for nuisance smell and all of that. So that's why I put it on the floor. I'm afraid if we take agricultural out completely, it's going to be uh, appealed and then we're going to be at that position. Okay, thank you for that. Councillor Dabrowski? Yeah, uh, just to Councillor Campbell's point, allowing it in industrial is a good compromise. And why jump in with both feet? It's a new industry. Mm -hmm. um, it was just legalized only a few years back. We do have the real op retail operations. We don't, we, we have some uh, potential investors knocking on our doors, but let's give them the industrial. Let's see what happens for the next couple of years. And the council at the time in, in two or three years can decide on where we go from there. But I think a, a good happy medium and a, a good balance and a good compromise is in allowing it in the industrial, listening to our residents, not allowing it in agricultural where it's affecting residents the most. Mm -hmm. So I, I think, uh, you know, we welcome cannabis to the city and we can do that in a, an industrial zone and see where we go from there. But uh, I can't support this motion. I, I don't support it in agricultural areas. It, as we all know, we do support it in the industrial. And, and we can uh, see where we are in a few years and, and see what kind of development we get from there. So I, I think it's a, a happy compromise for everyone. Okay. So the motion then, we've got the motion uh, by Councillor Coco, seconded by Councillor Iannone, to allow growing of cannabis inside in agricultural zones. Is that right? With okay. the ZBA and the OP. Right. Okay, so we've got that. Everyone's clear on that. All those in favor? Okay. Three in favor, opposed, and five opposed. Okay, got that one. Councilor Lococo, floor is yours. 
The last one is regarding agricultural outdoors, and I'm um, the, mo the motion would be not to permit it agricultural per the recommendation of staff. Okay, motion by Councillor Coco, seconded by Councillor Peter Angelo, that we do not allow outdoor uh, growing in agricultural areas. Okay, that's the motion. We'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, and that is unanimous. Okay. Uh, yes, Councillor. One final thing, Mr. Mayor. I would just like to check with Ms. Dolch. Did we cover everything in your in the report, the recommendations? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, through you, through you to the Councillor. Uh, I did want to note that um, there was some things missed because we do have different bylaws, unfortunately. So we have Crowland, which allows yard storage, heavy manufacturing district, um, and the industrial in Willoughby. So. Um, we do have to consider those because you've just dealt with the um, general and heavy in 79200, so we have to deal with those. Um, we also have rural agricultural crowland, rural in Willoughby, and any zone in Humberstone. Is there a way that we could um, make what we've done for all the zones, Willoughby and Crowland? Is there yes, I think if you if you specify about uh, what you've done for, and, and the other thing I did want to mention, you've what was put forward was agricultural uh, indoors so you turned that down but yes. you didn't support the other yet obviously you've turned you which which one uh, i said you didn't support what we were recommending requiring a zoning bylaw amendment an official plan amendment for agricultural uh, it was just what was put on the floor uh, in terms of a zone in terms of allowing it indoor which was turned down okay so we have to you have to make a recommendation on the agricultural area, and maybe you can just reference the rural agricultural, rural Willoughby, and any zone in the Humberstone that it would. So, applied. if I understand that correctly, since it was voted down for agriculture on both indoor and out, indoor and outdoor, we wouldn't support those bylaws. Is that what the motion would be? Yeah, the motion would be generally what we have requiring is official plan and zoning amendment for the agricultural, rural. Agri what, what's in the report? That hasn't been considered yet. Oh, Mr. Uh, yes, Councillor. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I think Lori just said that does that mean that we would vote against those? I would think that Lori's motion, can she remake the motion that it be it her original motion that was turned down, but she and I voted for it. I don't know who else did, I can't see. But that that covers all three of those in one general motion, or are we going to go area by area? Because really, I think what we said, what, what I don't know who the other person was who voted for, but the three of us said, we think they should be allowed to be grown agricultural indoor. And I would vote the same way for all those other areas. So could her motion not be remade to encompass all of them? Well, that's what I was suggesting. So yeah. how can okay. we do it? Uh, like to have the same footprint or the same template for the other uh, areas? Yes, that's correct. You can just indicate that, that that motion that was put on the floor that you considered dealt with all those areas, uh, but it was denied. Uh, it wasn't supported uh, because that was the one with the um, indoor growing in the agricultural area. But you you haven't supported what you're, you're, you haven't approved what you're going to support in the agricultural, rural, all those areas. I don't think we're, they're approved. I think they're only approving uh, heavy industrial and general industrial. Correct. So you have to make, you have to support you would have to put on the floor to require an official plan amendment or to say nobody's put forward the motion that it's not permitted in the agricultural area, period, right? There's no motion yet on the floor. The only one that was put on the floor was uh, Councillor Lococo saying that it would be permitted indoor in okay. the agricultural area. So we need a mo Do you want to make that motion? Okay. So um, can you help us wordsmith this? Uh, I just, uh, I don't know who, Mr. CAO, why don't you help us this words? Well, it, it just, I think it's as simple as it's, it's not permitted in an agricultural area. There would be no, you know, it's just not permitted. So you would just exempt that from, from that area. And I think that's a straightforward. And you would apply it to all the, uh, all the areas. Okay, so all areas, all agricultural areas, is that right? Will that, that cover it? That's correct. That'll okay. cover it. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Sorry, it's just hard, too, because I'm looking through three plexiglass at you right at a bend in the... So it's, it's really awkward. Okay, and do we have a seconder for that motion? Uh, Councillor Campbell. Okay, is there any discussion to that motion? Okay. Well, yeah, you sure? Recorded vote, Mr. Clerk? 
Mr. Mayor, can I have some clarification? I'm sorry, this yes. is getting confusing. So this is in no agricultural, indoor or outdoor. So if somebody voted for indoor, this motion is covering both. It doesn't give the person an opportunity to break up the, the indoor outdoor. It's just all in one. So if you, if you record, if you record the voted no, then it doesn't show that you did vote for indoor. See where I'm going with that? Yeah, this is a separate motion. So I think the other one that you voted for by voting for this, you're trying to asking, will it negate your vote on the other one? Is that your No, asking? not that it will negate my vote, but if you look at this vote only for those particular bylaws, it's saying no to agricultural period in those three areas. If you voted for indoor and it was turned down, to vote for this, you're voting agricultural as one when you, right. okay, for, for specifically, I voted for indoor and not outdoor. Right. If I vote for this, I had two for outdoor before, and now I'm only voting for outdoor all in one. Well, you could split it further. Can we split it? Can we it? do that? Uh, I, I feel more comfortable. Indoor and outdoor for Willoughby and Crowland. Can we do it like that? So then you could. What's that? But for the bylaws. Just in a different area. Because we'll be. I'm getting a little bit confused. We're, we're kind of. Sorry. Will change anything? I, I believe I believe the issue that the councillor is saying is that then the public recorded record shows, uh, you know, that a councillor may have supported indoor growing and agriculture, not outdoor growing. But in this case, because it's exempting, because those two motions were defeated and weren't on a, on a recorded vote, there is no record of the individual voting at that point in time. So I believe that's the councillor's concern. Mm -hmm is that though a councillor may have supported indoor growing in an agricultural zone, the recorded vote won't actually reflect that. So I'm not sure if there is a way to clarify and go back, but I, I don't think you can go back and re-vote the same issue. So. I'll drop the vote. Yeah, I think that might help. Okay, yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. There. I think we're good. In my opinion, as the clerk, all of the votes are recorded. Even when they're defeated, we will record who the mover was, who the seconder was, who was in favor and who was opposed. So if that factors into the situation, that should be considered. Yeah, so we can refer back to the minutes. Thank you for that clarification, but I don't think I'm making myself clear. So if I oppose this, it's agricultural in those three specific for the bylaws. I didn't oppose indoor Right. So by me opposing this, now I'm saying I, I never supported indoor. So that's why I'm wondering, can we break it up of those three with indoor and outdoor? Yeah. Because it's, it's not an accurate vote for anybody who said yes to one yeah. and then now is expected to lump right. it together. That's why I asked earlier, could we separate it for indoor and outdoor for agricultural? So would that be easier just to split it up? Ah. Like, yeah. What's that, Councillor Ionone? I said, I'm sorry, you just have to ask. I, I thought it was if you ask for it to be split, it automatically gets split. Yeah, well, we can do that. We're just trying to figure out if that can be done, if that solves the, the dilemma. Does that solve it for you? Then you can be voted in, voting in favor of it indoor in agricultural areas in all the areas. Is that what you're looking right. for? Yes, as long as that, that would be good for me. Is that good for Ms. Dolch? Does that break it up to what she needs for the bylaws? If it's two separate it's, ones. Thank you, Worship. Through you to the council. Yes, it does. Um, as long as it uh, you reference for all the bylaws, that's fine. We can we can sort that out. Okay. So the first motion, are we going to do indoor? Um, I'll do that. Okay. Do you want to do that one first? So the first motion is for indoor in agricultural in those three areas. I put the motion forward. Oh, we have one. I'll second it. Which one? Councilor Dabrowski introduced the motion. Okay. So do we need to withdraw? We have five seconds. Could, could we withdraw that one, Councillor so sure. we can do, it just splits it up, makes yep. it cleaner? Okay, then, then you can be consistent. Okay, so go ahead, throw it out there. So the motion is for indoor, in agricultural, with all of the recommendations in the, with those specific bylaws as stated in, in the report. Okay. Second. And, okay, moved by Councillor Lacoco, seconded by uh, Councillor Iannone. Councillor Campbell? We already voted on it, they already did this. No, but not in Willoughby, Crowland, apparently the way the bylaws so are. It's separate. Yeah, I know, but apparently they still have separate. The bylaws haven't all been updated. I believe that. Is that what the... It's only been since 79, right? Yeah, I know. I know. So I think that... Is that... Am I right, Mr. Uh, Mr. CAO? 
I, I would say that I would say that it was previously defeated. I think we're rephrasing it to say that we are we are barring or not allowing it. We're almost rephrasing the question to get to I think what the consensus of council is to not allow uh, production in agricultural zones. So now we're just saying we're not we're now saying we are not going to allow uh, cannabis production in agricultural zones with a with one being with indoor growing and with one being uh, outdoor growing for all the applicable zones. But right. it's very similar to what was voted on previously. We're just rephrasing it to get to a blanket exemption in all the agricultural zones. Would that cover your bylaws then? It, Mr. it just the, the challenge was what happened before was you defeated the motion, but you you were silent on what was going to be allowed or disallowed in the agricultural zones. So what this motion is now doing is being specific to address what will be allowed or not allowed in the agricultural zones. Because you defeated what was presented, uh, there was no alternative. So there is so agricultural zones were left without direction. So we're just trying to provide direction to the agricultural zones. At this point in time, yeah, yeah, and I, I think this one it'll be for all the all the applicable areas in the city of Niagara Falls. So we'll just be clear on that. Maybe ask her. Yes. So in terms of all areas in the city of Niagara Falls, um, I think that's a little difficult because again, it, are you referring to all agricultural areas in the city of Niagara Falls? Because you, you broke up your motions, that's why I'm a bit concerned. Like even with the general uh, industrial and heavy, there are other zones, yard storage, heavy manufacturing, and just general industrial. Um, but if we just say, you know, the uh, it, it, anyway, in terms of the recommendation put forward, I think you have to kind of specify at least industrial, all the industrial-related zones in those, not just all the city zones, because we could run into problems. Yeah, Your Worship, and I did think that the comment came because, I mean, we have different bylaws in the city, whether it be Humberstone, uh, Crowland, Willoughby, or even the city of Niagara Falls. So I thought that the comment came that we didn't encompass all those other zones within it. So um, in, in, instead of passing individual motions for all of those zones, can we not just say within the city limits? And that was my question. Um, if we were to edit our previous motions to just include those words within the city limits, then the city limits would encompass Crowland, Willoughby, Humberstone, and Niagara Falls proper. Thank you, Your Worship. I think I think the issue is is the fact that within the city limits, because you specified uh, when you did your original motion, general industrial and heavy industrial, they don't qualify in Crowland or in Willoughby. Those zones don't exist. So, within but that's the okay, isn't it? So you weren't looking, so originally our recommendation, and again, I, I don't know your intent, so, but our recommendation was, mm -hmm. was that it would be permitted in yard storage, heavy manufacturing, and industrial uh, in Crowland and Willoughby. But maybe that's not your intent, and I don't know what your intent is. I'm just saying that was our recommendation to allow um, the cannabis growth in those zones. I, I just guess I see, Nadeep, did you put your name, uh, are you on the screen? Did you want to weigh in on this? Well, I just wanted to say that, like, legally, we want to be careful that we're not doing an absolute prohibition, as that's not permitted under the Planning Act. Like, we want to make sure that it looks like we're regulating it, because regulating is within our authority, but an absolute ban is not. So I just wanted to be mindful of that. Okay. Okay. So help us get there. How can we do... How can we accomplish what we want? Can we maybe just take a five minute? Yeah, okay. We're going to we're gonna do five minute recess, let staff caucus, and come up with a way out of this.
Okay, welcome back. Um, we just had a, a recess. A staff have caucused, and uh, they. I'm now going to ask our CAO if he would update council on our next steps. Thank you. Through the mayor to council, uh, staff, staff did caucus. Uh, we have prepared a motion. Uh, however, uh, staff feels appropriate that council receives legal advice in camera. Uh, prior to staff presenting the motion. So uh, staff's requested that uh, council move to in camera and uh, Nitty, our corporate solicitor and our planner will provide some uh, advice uh, on the uh, proposed motion. Okay, look for a motion to go in camera. Moved by Councillor Strange, seconded by sure. Councillor Dabrowski. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that is unanimous of everybody that's here. Okay, we're gonna go in camera, mm -hmm. committee room one.
Okay, folks, we just went in camera to get some legal advice on the planning matter we're dealing with. Uh, we're ready to resume our regular meeting. I'm going to ask our CAO, Mr. Burgess, to direct us on our next steps, please. Uh, thank you. To the, through the mayor to council, uh, the council did receive uh, legal advice on uh, the proposed wording uh, and, and why the proposed wording is presented in its manner uh, coming forward. Uh, Ms. Dolch will uh, present the uh, proposed bylaw. Uh, we thought it was best to have one comprehensive bylaw that's clear uh, to the public and, and in the minutes that being, uh, so this bylaw will, will essentially be the comprehensive bylaw moving forward. Uh, it will replace the previous votes of council, though those votes will, stay, uh, will still stay on the minutes uh, for records for everyone's voting decisions on particular issues. But this would be the comprehensive bylaw uh, moving forward on cannabis uh, for council. So I'll turn it over to Ms. Dolch to read uh, the bylaw out, and then council can then uh, put a motion or a seconder to it and debate that this motion. Thank you. Ms. Dolch. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, so we'll start with the official plan and the official plan wording would be to permit cannabis cultivation and production in the industrial designations within the city limits subject to the following policies. Be in accordance with federal cannabis regulations, be indoors with appropriate infiltration and ensure no emissions of odor, be subject to site plan control, be 500 meters from sensitive land uses and prohibit outdoor cultivation and to accept the rest of the bylaw as presented. For the zoning, to permit cannabis cultivation and production in the industrial and yard storage zones within the city limits. For clarity, this would include bylaw 79200, Crowland and Willoughby, except for prestige and the light industrial zones and development holding zones, subject to the following regulations. Be wholly enclosed in a building that is not a residence with appropriate air filtration, have no outdoor cultivation, be 500 meters from sensitive land uses, excluding houses on the same property, not have outdoor storage, and not emit any cannabis odors outside of a building, and to accept the rest of the bylaws presented. Site plan, have all cannabis growing facilities, cultivation and production, subject to the site plan control process. Thank you, thank you for that. Do we have someone to move this? Uh, Councilor Lococo, second by Councilor Cario. Do we have any discussion to the motion on the floor? Okay, let's call that vote. All those in favor? Okay, and that is unanimous. Thank you very much to our staff for getting us through that quagmire. Okay, let's move along. Huh? That didn't take long. Mr. Clerk, would you please introduce the next item on the agenda? Public meeting is now being convened to consider a proposed amendment to the city's zoning bylaw to permit the development of two four-story apartment buildings with 40 dwelling units at 7711 and 7725 through to 7739 Drummond Road. Notice was given by first class mail in accordance with the Planning Act on March 11, 2022 and by posting a sign on the property in question. Anyone who wants notice of the passing of the zoning bylaw amendment to participate in any site plan process if applicable, or preserve their opportunity to appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal shall give notice to the city clerk immediately after today's public meeting. Thank you very much, Mr. Clerk. Uh, now we'd ask our planner, uh, Julie Hanna, if she'd please explain the purpose and reason for the proposed amendments. Good evening, Your Worship, members of council, as well as members of the public. And I will uh, share my screen with you. Can you see the presentation? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Um, so thank you. I will be presenting uh, application received uh, on Drummond Road to permit two buildings uh, with 40 apartment dwelling units. The location is north of Oldfield and west of Drummond Road. Um, the map. The map indicates uh, the surrounding land uses uh, being primarily detached dwellings with a heavy industrial operation to the south 
and the Thundering Waters Golf Course um, also located to the south. The preliminary site plan includes <coughs> two buildings, uh, each with a total of uh, or totaling 40 apartment units. Uh, the buildings are positioned closer to the street with parking behind for better streetscaping and um, to also position the buildings to be away from the existing detached dwellings. Access will be located on the north portion of the site and 61 parking spaces are provided. A perspective of the, of the buildings uh, was prepared by the architect. Um, I will note that the uh, site's plan has changed. So the buildings are now uh, pushed together. So there will be one building along Orfield and one building along Drummond. In terms of background, uh, the total land parcel is 1.23 acres. The official plan policy permits apartment dwellings. The applicant is requesting a site-specific apartment 5B density or 5B zone. An uh, open house was held and no public comments uh, were received. We did receive comments uh, yesterday that the clerk has put onto uh, your council packages this evening. The application conforms to provincial, regional, and city policies. In terms of the proposed zoning, uh, the slide before you outlines the um, requested zoning that the applicant has put forward. Staff are supportive of the proposed zoning uh, in its entirety for the reasons set out in the staff report. Staff are recommending that council approve to rezone the lands a site specific R5B zone to permit two four story uh, apartment buildings with 40 dwelling units subject to the regulations as outlined in report PVD 2022-22. Thank you. Yeah, that's great, thank you very much. Any questions of council? Okay, uh, seeing none, members of the public are advised that failure to made, make an oral or written submission at this public meeting could result in the Ontario Land Tribunal dismissing any referral it receives. <coughs> failure to notify the city clerk to preserve their opportunity to appeal will result in staff rejecting an appeal as per section 3419 of the Planning Act. Council will now hear from anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak to the proposed amendments. <coughs> Mr. Clerk, do we have anyone wishing to speak? Uh, yes, Your Worship, we do have one resident who has uh, uh, registered to speak to this matter and I do believe he is on standby. Uh, we'll just get him to state his name and address for the record. Okay, thank you for that. Hello everyone, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Raj Patel and my address is 7533 Old Field Road, Niagara Falls, Ontario. Welcome to the meeting. Welcome to the meeting, Raj. Uh, you've got up to five minutes to express your views. Thank you very much. So my concern with the, the two dwelling units is that they're gonna be a violation of our privacy as they're gonna be very close to our home. So because of the balconies, the residents of the dwelling units will be able to peer into our homes. Okay, is that is that it? And a second concern of mine is that due to the way the sun rises, it's gonna cause an overall darkness in the neighborhood, which would negatively affect the environment okay thank you for that so we've got the two comments any anything else nope that's all thank you very much for okay hearing. mr mr patel thank you very much for your input we'll get some answers from the the developer uh, who will be up next okay thank you is there anyone else mr clerk that's it okay great council will now hear from the applicant or his or her representative Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. Uh, my name is Youth Maman, uh, planner and upper Canada consultants representing uh, Mountain View for this application. Okay, welcome to the meeting. I do have a presentation I would like to give. I'm not sure if I have the ability to share my screen or if that has to be done um, to the clerk. Um, okay, just one second, we yeah. can reconnect you. Just one second. Yep, yeah. sure. and you can. Um, my suggestion, I yeah, there were, I don't know, did you hear the concerns from the gentleman that was just online? 
I did, yes. Um, I can speak to that generally. Um, understanding that his property is immediately adjacent um, to the west, that would be. Um, there wouldn't be a balcony on the west facade of the building immediately adjacent. Um, there's also some, some landscape plantings proposed along that property line. Um, and as well, I'll note that um, there, the buildings would maintain uh, the required 7.25 meter setback. Um, and in this zoning, the setback is tied uh, to the height of the building. So the higher the building uh, goes up, the, the greater the side yard setback would have to be. Okay. All right. So um, our, uh, our probably the best thing here is uh, keep it, I mean, high level. If there's anything you have that has not already been covered by our planner, but maybe you can focus on that. Um, certainly I can, uh, I can field any, any general questions. I think Julie covered off most things pretty comprehensively, but if there's any specific uh, questions or comments from from the committee that I feel I might need to uh, a short presentation. I can certainly do that. Okay. Do we have any questions or comments of council? Okay. It, it looks like we're good. I don't I don't see there being any questions or comments. So um, unless there's something new to add, we haven't already dealt with. I think I'm ready to close the public meeting. Are you comfortable with that? I'm I'm good with that. If that's uh, if that's what council feels. Okay. All right, I hold think on, that, hold, yeah, on oh, hold on one second, our clerk is just summonsing me. It's the word of the night. Uh, so our, our IT staff is just letting us know that uh, one of the applicants from Mountain View Group does have his hand up, so he may want to speak uh, in addition to uh, Mr. Lamont there. Okay. Um, so if we'll maybe just give him a moment to connect. Okay, yeah, because I can't see that on my screen. Hi everyone, uh, Matt Bertinian uh, from Mountain View Homes. I'm a project manager here. Can everyone hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you fine. Yeah, I just wanted to, uh, through you Mr. Mayor, just, just say to this to the, uh, to the speaker that uh, we are proposing a 1.8 high, 1.8 meter high privacy fence along that side. And uh, through the site plan process, we will be adding additional landscaping there as well to kind of buffer and screen from that property. So in, in addition to the balconies actually facing the parking lot, we are going to make some efforts to, to screen and, and retain that, uh, that neighbor's privacy there. Just wanted to relay that to council. That's great. That's very helpful. I appreciate that. Okay. Well, if there's nothing more, uh, the public meeting with respect to the proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendment is now concluded. What's the will of council? Councilor Cario? Motion by Councillor Kerry to move the recommendation seconded by Councillor Strange. There's no further discussion. We'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, and that is unanimous. Thank you for that. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Now, 7.3. Okay. Uh, okay, we've got a conflict for this next planning item with Councillor Kerry. Uh, Mr. Clerk, can you please introduce the next item on the agenda? Huh? You have a conflict too? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yes. A okay, public meeting is now being convened to consider a proposed amendment to the city's official plan and zoning bylaw to permit the existing office building and to permit a portion of the required parking for four hotels to locate on the subject lands on a portion of 5881 Dunn Street. Notice was given by first class mail in accordance with the Planning Act on March 11th, 2022, and by posting a sign on the properties in question. Anyone who wants notice of the passing of the official plan and zoning bylaw amendment to participate in any site plan process, if applicable, or preserve their opportunity to appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal shall give notice to the city clerk immediately after today's public meeting. Thank you very much, Mr. Clerk. Now call on our planner, Julie Hanna, to help walk us through the next application and explain the purpose and reason for the proposed amendment. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of council and the public. Um, this application refers to a portion of 5881 Dunn Street 
and the request is to apply a special policy area designation to permit the existing office as well as the offsite parking for four hotels and to rezone the lands to a site specific R4 zone. Yes, sir. Uh, the location of the subject land um, is shown north of Dunn Street and there are the four adjacent um, nearby hotels where the offsite parking will be generated from that will be located on this site uh, should council approve the application. Um, it is noted that there are uh, property owners that are associated with these four hotels um, that aren't listed in the application for ease of council's reference. In terms of the site plan itself, uh, the specific parcel is located uh, to the east and is identified as part one and outlined in red. Um, there will be a dedication of right of way along Dunn Street and the driveway is being proposed to be realigned to align with the driveway access um, on the southern portion of the road. We did hold an open house and have received neighborhood comments um, several concerns were identified. Uh, one question was why the satellite parking was needed and the parking, um, as I previously indicated, is being relocated for four hotels and this will facilitate redevelopment of those lands. Uh, there is the option available um, for the lands to develop for residential uses in the future. A second concern was volume of traffic. Um, the traffic study that was support uh, with this application identifies no concerns and those findings were supported by our traffic services staff. And the third concern was security of the site and its immediate surroundings. And we have been informed by the applicant um, that they will have security personnel and surveillance equipment on the site. And as you will read in the report and further in this presentation, um, the property will be fenced. In terms of background, uh, the subject parcel um, of that portion of the land is approximately 3.5 acres. Again, uh, an official plan amendment is requested for a specific policy to recognize the existing office use and permit 127 satellite parking spaces. And the site specific R4 zone would add an office, which is again existing and satellite parking lot to the permitted uses, as well as permit 127 satellite parking spaces. The application conforms to provincial, regional, and city policies. In regards to the proposed zoning, uh, planning staff uh, have made additional recommendations that are aligned in detail in the staff report. Um, so I will just briefly speak to them. The first is that a 1.8 meter closed board fence uh, be installed surrounding um, the property boundaries other than that on Dunn Street. Um, that a minimum landscape buffer from Dunn Street being four meters after road widening be applied to maintain consistency with the landscaping along Dunn Street. And that a maneuvering aisle width of 5.9 meters instead of 6.9 meters um, be supported uh, to facilitate the increased landscape buffer as well as uh, snow storage on the site. Um, I will note that the applicant's uh, agent has worked with planning staff um, in generating the four meters uh, number, and we do have a revised site plan that indicates uh, that this uh, will work for the applicant's needs. In conclusion, staff recommend that council apply the special policy area designation to recognize the existing office and permit 127 satellite parking spaces and rezone the site to a site-specific R4 zone subject to the regulations outlined in report PBD 2022-23. Thank you. Thanks, Julie. Um, is there any questions of council? Yes, Councilor Lococo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through to Ms. Hanna, there was a resident's concern about the three large red maple trees um, and he was wondering if the parking could be reconfigured to save the lawn. That just came in recently. Are we um, able to address that? Through you, Mr. Mayor, yes. I, I didn't receive that specific um, comment. Um, that is something that we could look at. The application will be going through site plan control. And so um, 
not knowing where the specific location of the maple trees is right now, I, I couldn't um, speak to the specific trees that uh, the resident is identifying, um, but the applicant may be able to speak to that further. Thank you. Thank you for that, Councillor. Any other questions or comments of Council at this point? Okay, seeing none, members of the public are advised that failure to make an oral or written submission at this public meeting could result in the Ontario Land Tribunal dismissing any referral it receives. Failure to notify the city clerk to preserve the op their opportunity to appeal will result in staff rejecting an appeal as per section 3419 of the Planning Act. Council will now hear from anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak to the proposed amendment. Mr. Clerk, do we have anyone who wishes to speak to council on this? Uh, Your Worship, there is no one from the public that is registered and seeing none in the gallery as well. Okay, thank you for that. Council will now hear from the applicant or his or her representative. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Councilor, staff, and all attending by Zoom tonight. Not sure if you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you fine. Very good. It's Italia Gilberti. I just want to um, uh, advise you all that I'm now a proud partner at the law firm of Sullivan Manny, located at the Niagara Falls office, and I'm very pleased to be here tonight. I am going to briefly just uh, comment that I have not heard anything about these three maple trees. Uh, obviously, my client will uh, definitely work with um, with the neighbor through the site plan process to identify the location of these trees and if there's any way possible that they not be disturbed. Um, I also wanted to thank all of the staff of the various departments at City Hall because this application has been ongoing for quite some time. <coughs> Um, especially the planning staff, including Ms. Dolch, Mr. Bryce, Ms. Hanna, and our retired Mr. Hurlovich, who was also involved from the beginning. Um, there are five companies involved. I don't think I need to mention those. They are um, the owner of the subject lands, the owner of the embassy suites, the owner of the uh, Tower Hotel, which is uh, the formerly known as the Minolta Tower the uh, owner of the proposed Hyatt Hotel and the owner of the Wyndham Garden Inn. The uh, principal behind all of those is Mr. Car Car Carmelo Menicello. Um, I believe Jeremy Tran is with me, the planning consultant. Uh, Mr. Hendricks was also to be here, but he had a conflict with another commitment. Uh, we're here to answer any questions and we've read the report and just want to indicate that we agree with all of that and we hope that you can approve the application. This is application number one of three. They are all intertwined, uh, but we had to submit them separately for the reasons as so far as Julie, who has made a very thorough presentation, um, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Hannah, um, who has made a very thorough presentation um, of the site and the projects. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Gilberti. Do we have any questions for the applicant of council? Okay, looks like we're good on this end. Okay, thank you. so I'm, uh, unless uh, you have any concerns, Ms. Gilberti, I'm ready to, uh, to um, end the public meeting. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, great. So the public meeting with respect to the proposed official plan and zoning bylaw amendment is now included. The will of council, Councillor um, Strange. Move the recommendation, seconded by Councillor Peter Angelo. Call a vote. Uh, yes, we can do that. A recorded vote called by Councillor Dabrowski. Mr. Clerk. <laughs> okay, so the motion is to approve the recommendations as in the report. Uh, Councillor Campbell. In favor. Councillor Dabrowski. Yes. Councillor Iannone. In favor. Uh, Councillor Curio has declared a conflict. Councillor Lococo. In favor. Councillor Peter Angelo. Aye. Councillor Strange. In favor. Councillor Thompson has also stepped out to declare a conflict. And Mayor Diodati. I'm in favor. And that passes. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, so now. We are going to the other sheet. There we go. 
Okay, Mr. Clerk, can you please introduce the next item on the agenda? Public meeting is now being convened to consider a proposed amendment to the city zoning bylaw to permit the development of eight on street and 22 block townhouse dwellings uh, at 5881 Dunn Street. Notice was given by first class mail in accordance with the Planning Act on March 11th, 2022 and by posting a sign on the properties in question. Anyone who wants notice of the passing of the zoning bylaw amendment to participate in any site plan process if applicable or preserve their opportunity to appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal shall give notice to the city clerk immediately after today's public meeting. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Uh, I'll now go to our planner, Julie Hanna. She can explain the purpose and reason for the proposed bylaw amendment, please. Uh, thank you again, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, as well as uh, members of the public. And as Ms. Gilberti um, mentioned, this is the second in third uh, associated files. Um, this application again addresses a portion of 5881 Dunn Street and this portion is uh, requesting that the lands be rezoned to a site specific R4 zone to permit eight on street townhouses and 22 block townhouses. And so uh, the subject land is um, shown between uh, Dixon and Dunn, and it is on the west side of the parcel. In terms of the site plan, it is on the western portion. It's outlined in red, um, with part two being identified. And again, the proposal um, will be for a future condominium for the eight on-street townhouses that are located along Dixon and 22 block townhouses that are located um, through access of a private road uh, that um, is on the western portion of the site, the private road uh, traversing between Dixon and Dunn. Um, there's a total of 30 townhouse units proposed. Again, uh, right-of-way dedication is uh, required on Dunn Street. A sidewalk will be required on Dixon Street and internal sidewalks will be proposed um, and identified through the vacant condominium process. Several perspectives um, have been submitted of what the proposed uh, townhouses may look like. Um, again, at the vacant condominium application, um, these will be further refined and presented before council. An open house was held and several neighborhood comments have been received both at the open house and through written correspondence. Um, in terms of the concerns raised, uh, the first is the amount of landscaping in front of, in the front yards of the Dixon Street townhouses. Um, planning staff note that there is the opportunity to increase the amount of landscaping by removing uh, one parking space. Uh, there is an excess of parking being provided, so there is opportunity to adjust uh, landscaping appropriately. Um, the modern architectural style in a traditional neighborhood was the second concern raised and we note that architectural control is not in place in this neighborhood. Uh, third concern was the proposed building height and we note that the height is the same as what is allowed for the attached uh, detached lots. The fourth concern is a need for sidewalks and as identified uh, previously, internal sidewalks will be provided as well as an additional sidewalk will be installed on Dixon Street, which currently does not exist. Uh, the Dunn Street sidewalk will be maintained. And the last concern was the provision of park or open space on the site. Um, private condominiums do not have to provide public parkland. Uh, in doing so, uh, they provide cash in lieu. Um, with the proposed development private amenity space for each of the units will be provided. In terms of background, uh, this portion of uh, the site, again, which is located to the west, uh, western portion of the parcel is approximately 3.7 acres. The uh, request is for a site specific R4 to permit on street and block townhouses. And again, this pulse, uh, application uh, conforms to provincial, regional, and city policies. The proposed zoning is before you on the slide and detailed in the um, report itself. Uh, staff, again, recommend a 1.8 meter closed board fence along the east and west uh, lot line. 
um, in terms of the maximum law coverage, the request was 50%. Staff are re recommending a law coverage of 45% as that mm -hmm. is what is being shown on the site plan. Um, decks uh, may be permitted and they are not subject to law coverage requirements. Uh, so staff um, feel that the 45% recommendation is sufficient for the proposed development. In terms of the uh, other uh, requested zoning uh, site-specific regulations, staff are supportive. In terms of the recommendation, staff recommend that council approve the to rezone the lands a site-specific R4 zone to permit 30 townhouse units subject to the regulations as outlined in report PBD 2022-24. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hannah. Appreciate that. Uh, any questions of council for Ms. Hannah? Okay. Council will now hear from anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak to the proposed bylaw amendment. Oh, I'm sorry, I jumped ahead. My apologies. <laughs> Members of the public are advised that failure to make an oral or written submission at this public meeting will result in the Ontario Land Tribunal dismissing any referral it receives. Failure to notify the city clerk to preserve their opportunity to appeal will result in staff rejecting an appeal as per section 3419 of the Planning Act. Council will now hear from anyone other than the applicant who wishes to speak to the proposed bylaw amendment. Mr. Clerk, do we have anyone who wishes to address council? Uh, Your Worship, there is nobody registered to speak to this matter. Okay, great. Um, council will now hear from the applicant or his or her representative. Will that be Ms. Gilberti again? Okay. Ms. Gilberti, are you there? Okay, there we are. There we are. Now. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, um, members of council, staff, uh, we want to thank all of the staff members that have been involved in this application. It's been a long process again, but we are very proud of it. And we've read the report. Uh, the planning consultant is also here available to answer any questions. Um, in the interest of time, I have nothing further to say. I'm reducing my presentation because, again, Ms. Hannah's done such a wonderful job at presenting the project. Um, if, we, if you have any questions, I'd be more, more than pleased to answer, as would uh, the planning consultants. Okay, great job, Ms. Hannah. Any questions of council for Ms. Gilberti? Okay, seeing none, I'm gonna close the meeting. The public meeting with respect to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is now concluded. What's the will of council? I've got Councillor Strange and then Lococo. Are you moving the recommendation? Okay. I've got, uh, are you seconding Councillor Lococo? Yes, I will, but I do have two comments. Okay. Um, so I would like to second it. I think it's a great opportunity to put a lot of much needed houses in a, in a, in a, um, um, intensifying in the area. Uh, when I did read the report, it talked about it had doubled the amount of parking and I thought, oh, that's really a good thing because quite often we don't have enough parking and then there's illegal parking issues. And then I also read that it was suggested to have additional landscaping in, in lieu of some of the parking. So I thought that was even a better idea. Um, and I, I agree with both of those things. There's gotta be a balance between landscaping and parking. And I think um, because we don't have to put a parkland there because there is other parklands in all applications. I think we need to start looking at green spaces, um, lawns, trees, and that, that's what this one is doing. So I will second the motion. Okay, thank you for that. Is there any other comments or questions? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, and that's unanimous as well. So well done, Ms. Gilberti. Good job, Ms. Hannah. And moving along our agenda, Mr. Clerk, can you introduce the next item on the agenda, please? Public meeting is now being convened to consider a proposed amendment to the city zoning bylaw to facilitate a four-story place of worship at 6170 Stanley Avenue and part of lands on the southwest corner of Fallsview Boulevard and Robinson Street. Notice was given by first class mail in accordance with the Planning Act on March 11th, 2022 and by posting a sign on the property in question. Anyone who wants notice of the passing of the zoning bylaw amendment to participate in any site plan process, if applicable, or preserve their opportunity to appeal to the Ontario Land Tribunal shall give notice to the city clerk immediately after today's public meeting. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. And I'll ask our planner, Ms. Hannah, to explain the purpose and reason for the proposed bylaw amendment. 
Thank you again, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, and members of the public. Uh, this is the third and, and final associated um, zoning bylaw application file. And it relates to a parcel of land um, that is part of 6170 Stanley Avenue and parts of lands uh, located on the southwest corner of Fallsview Boulevard and Robinson Street. And as the clerk identified, uh, the request is uh, to permit a place of worship that's four stories in height and um, to allow the parking to be relocated to Dunn Street, which was the subject of the previous application um, that was just heard. In terms of the location, the proposed uh, development itself um, is outlined in red. Um, there was an easement that was before the Committee of Adjustments, so it's identified on the northern portion of 6170 Stanley Avenue, uh, which I will speak to in, in a bit. Um, the surrounding properties are primarily hotels um, and other tourist commercial activities. In terms of the preliminary site plan, um, the proposed synagogue is depicted um, in terms of its location on the property and the easement itself is outlined in the checkboard pattern with uh, the truck movements um, and the easement land would be the location of the loading spaces. A preliminary perspective has been submitted to uh, planning staff and is before you now. In terms of background, um, the total land is approximately 3.58 acres. Uh, the request is for the land to be zoned a site specific tourist commercial zone. A holding provision will be applied um, requiring a record of site condition. Um, the Wyndham Garden Hotel site will need its zoning amended, and that is because uh, the two loading spaces that will be required for this site are going to be located off site, triggering the need for uh, rezoning of, of that land. Uh, so that is the one recommendation for council this evening. Uh, open house was held, and no public comments uh, rec were received either at the open house or consequently since. Um, I will note that the Committee of Adjustment has granted the provisional consent for the subject lands uh, with the zoning bylaw application being one of uh, the required conditions um, to be fulfilled for the consent to be finalized. The application conforms to provincial, regional, and city policies. In terms of the proposed uh, zoning, the screen that's before you now outlines the zoning uh, that is proposed that is outlined in greater depth uh, within the planning report. Um, staff are supportive of the proposed uh, zoning regulations. And we recommend that council uh, approve the zoning bylaw amendment to rezone the lands to a site specific TC zone to facilitate a four story place of worship. Um, subject to the regulations outlined in report PBD 2022-25. Um, and uh, it, it's in, in, in there, but you have approved PBD uh, 2022-23, um, so that uh, that will move this uh, portion of the recommendation forward. And that is it, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Hannah. Do we have any questions for our planner? Okay, seeing none, members of the public, or advise that failure to make an oral or written submission at this public meeting will result in the Ontario Land Tribunal dismissing any referral it receives. Failure to notify the city clerk to preserve their opportunity to appeal will result in staff rejecting an appeal as per section 3419 of the Planning Act. Council will now hear from anyone other than the applicant who <coughs> wishes to speak to the proposed bylaw amendment. Mr. Clerk, do we have anyone who wishes to address council? Uh, no, Mr. Mayor, we do not have any members of the public for this matter. Okay. Council will now hear from the applicant or his or her representative. Do we have anything you want to add, Ms. Gilberti? I just want to add, again, thanking all of staff. Again, this has been a long process. Um, there are four applicants to this. Uh, the owners of the Wyndham Garden, the owner of the vacant land at the corner, the owner of... Um, of the proposed Hyatt and the owner of the property on Dunn Street. Again, the principal is Car Carmelo Manichella, and I do have with me uh, Rabbi Zalman, 
who will be um, building and operating the Chabad, uh, the proposed Chabad synagogue um, that will be placed on this site. Aside from that, unless you have any questions, I do have the, the planners with me as well. Uh, we're more than pleased to ask you to approve of the application the way it was submitted. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Gilberti. It looks like we don't have any further questions. So I will close the meeting. The public meeting with respect to the proposed zoning bylaw amendment is now concluded. Uh, Councillor Cario, you move the recommendation. Councillor Campbell, you're seconding the recommendation. Then we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, and that passes unanimously. So congratulations. And just before we um, close this out entirely, I'd like to ask Council if I can draw your attention to item 10.11 under communications and comments of the city clerk. It ties together with the approval of the building that we just approved, the synagogue. And I'm sure uh, it's just a matter of funding, so 10.11. So we're looking for a motion to move and second this. I'm looking, uh, uh, moved by Councillor Strange, seconded by Councillor Cario. Do we have any discussion around that motion okay let's call the vote all those in favor i'm sorry do we have counselor it's just going past eight o'clock going past eight o'clock oh what's the motion no no it's the the proclamation 10.11 oh, of course. Yeah. yes of course so of course that is unanimous thank you and i'd like to say uh and i know the proper way uh is uh chabad is the proper way. And I want to say, Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov, Rabbi. The synagogue has been approved to be built taller, wider, bigger, and better. This will be the largest Chabad in Canada. So Rabbi, Rabbi Zalman Zaltzman, let's get the largest Chabad house built. And talking about Chabad, I want to acknowledge that today is a very special day in Chabad, and in fact, in the Jewish world. And I will be signing this proclamation that you just unanimously approved, and that'll go along and support the building of the synagogue. They've got a lot of money that they've got to raise. I know the rabbi is gonna be successful. He's successful at everything he does. So I'd like to say congratulations. We look forward to seeing it built. He's online if you want to give him a chance to say it. And I know, Rabbi, you are online. I don't know if there's anything you wanted to add to this or if, if you're all good. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Italia. Thank you. As Italia mentioned, this has been uh, two and a half, three years in the making. I appreciate everybody's assistance and uh, timely attention to this important matter. And I look forward to celebrating with all of you at uh, the building's opening. Gee, I thought I was going to get a compliment the way I said Chabad. <laughs> Chabad, you did it pretty good, I must say. Pretty good. Oh, pre you, you know. All I get is a pretty good. Okay, fine. All right, thank you. Congratulations, Rabbi. It was amazing. Your Chabad is pretty good. I'm sure at the opening it will be fantastic. <laughs> well, I have something to aspire to. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving down the agenda. So we are at item 8.1. Motion by Councillor Pierangelo. I'm sorry, Councillor Cario. Second by Councillor um, Strange. <laughs> Um, that we move the recommendation. Uh, yes, Councillor? Conflict on two of them. Okay, and uh, we have conflict from Councillor Lococo. That's noted, Mr. Clerk. Uh, we've got Amalgamated Transit Union, Can-Am Conference, cruising, cruising the Q Downtown Board of Management, Crazy Macaws Bike Night, Downtown Board of Management, and Chippewa Volunteer Slow Pitch Tournament, and SPN Arena Floor Use. And these are fee waivers for these applications. We'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, and that's unanimous with the exception of one conflict. And what are we off to next, Mr. Clerk? 8.2. Reinstatement of property tax penalty and interest rate at 1.25%. Looking for some direction. There's a recommendation there from staff. Looking for a direct, from a motion. Okay, moved by Councillor Strange, seconded by Councillor Dabrowski. Is there any further discussion to the motion? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay. Um, with two declared conflicts, is that right? Or no? Or no? Okay. Opposed? Okay. Opposed. All right. Two opposed. All right. Thank you for that. Item 8.3, 
Dorchester Road, south of McLeod Road, bike reconstruction and bicycle lane implementation. Motion by Councillor Thompson, second by Councillor Strange. Oh, hold on, the clerk is summonsing me again. Word of the night. So that, that's great, Mr. Mayor, that you've got the, the motion there. I just wanted to point out, we do have one member of the resident of, of the city, sorry, one resident uh, that wishes to speak, uh, Mr. Neil Mooney, I believe, uh, is online and would like to speak to this report. Okay, uh, I'm sure, what was the last name? Mooney. Mooney? Okay, Mr. Yes. Mooney, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you fine. Welcome to the meeting. Well, thank you, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to address Council. Uh, this provides me with an opportunity to raise a, a couple of issues, and please do understand uh, I'm one person, but I'm not one voice. Uh, we did have an on-site meeting regarding this matter a couple of weeks ago, and there were approximately 20 homeowners that were present. So. What I submitted and what I'm going to speak to isn't just my words, it represents a good number of the residents along this area. Um, I'd also like to note, uh, I've been following the meeting most of the evening, and I, uh, I certainly appreciate the fact that Council is concerned about the uh, well-being and protection of residents because that's, that's where I'm coming from, that will be my direction. To begin, I do want to make it absolutely clear that every resident along here is supportive of the construction along Dorchester Road. As you may well be aware, uh, the condition of the road is just atrocious. So it's long overdue. So we are looking forward to that portion of it. A uh, couple of elements, and I do understand that uh, city staff did submit a report. So I'll be addressing a couple of those issues. Most notably, and I think the issue that's um, united everybody in unanimous for all of the residents is the commercial vehicle traffic that we experience here. It is, uh, to be kind and to be polite, it is highly disruptive uh, to the residents. Uh, we believe it presents a safety issue. Uh, it also adds a significant amount of congestion coming off the highway along McLeod Road and ultimately Dorchester to its destination, which typically is Palfinger, uh, Niagara, um, movers, we have the uh, casino warehouse and one other area. So what we're looking for is council to take a serious look at the matter and perhaps some action whereby we set up a designated truck route that would see those trucks divert and exit off the QEW from Lions Creek Road and enter in off Chippewa Parkway and that's South Dorchester Road to alleviate a good deal of the congestion the disruption and the safety issues that, that presents. So that's the first issue, so we're, we're hopeful that everybody understands just how impactful uh, that something like that can be. The second issues are pertaining to traffic calming um, with the development at Old Field, and there's two other developments that are proposed that is just gonna add and increase uh, residential development, but also car traffic the driver behavior along this road is like the road it's atrocious so what we're seeking there is the installation of an all-way stop at the intersection of jubilee and dorchester uh, and the purpose there is to break that traffic to slow it down you may or may not be aware but there are three school bus loading zones in this area and there are five municipal transit bus stops here and the drivers just have no regard and no respect for the homeowners, the students, the pedestrians, none of that type of stuff. So we are seeking something with regard to the stop sign. And the third matter is, and it's, it's another issue that's fairly common in many other jurisdictions, and I just give reference to correspondence between Niagara Region to the Ministry of Transportation as it pertains to a reduction in the speed limit uh, here we see the standard of the statutory posting of 50 kilometer an hour, and that typically means people are going 60 or plus, and in many cases, well beyond that. Uh, it's a true safety hazard. So what we're seeking is a reduction to now the 40 kilometer an hour speed limit. We believe that those three measures are achievable, they're reasonable, and there's no reason why they can't be implemented. I know we're short on time. I know you've been sitting there for a long time, so I'll keep my comments brief, but there they are. And I have made these very same submissions to staff members, most notably Mr. Galea, 
uh, Mr. Billado and a number of your senior managers there as well. So it's not new to anybody. Um, it is very much there. So those are the concerns of the residents here in Dorchester Road. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much, Mr. Mooney. Uh, I see our Director of Municipal Works, Mr. Nickel, is on the line, and uh, uh, some councillors are anxious to speak to this. And as well, I'm sure we can add a recommendation that uh, we have staff look into these three issues being truck roads, traffic calming, and speed limits. But I'll invite Mr. Nickel to address uh, the council and Mr. Mooney's uh, concerns. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and through you, I don't have a lot more to say than what's already been covered in the report. Um, I, we did um, have an on-site meeting and uh, Mr. Mooney was very helpful in expressing some of those concerns. So the, the, uh, the challenge that staff have with this specific road is, is it, it is designated in our official plan and it acts as a major collector. And so to act as a major collector, it's trying to do all things for all people which means it's trying to provide access to businesses, it's trying to provide access to residents, and it's also trying to maintain throughput of vehicles um, in a higher order than your typical local streets. So for that sense, we don't, uh, we never recommend traffic calming measures because they hinder and often get in the way of the movement of goods and people in an efficient way. Um, in this case, um, we, we've done a lot of looking at what options could be implemented uh, and we feel that the, the, the options that we've put forward, which would be the bicycle lanes and narrow streets and improved uh, crosswalks would provide higher levels of traffic calming than, than that are there today. What we can commit to, and maybe it's one suggestion, is um, upon completion, we can do an extensive follow-up study, a, a speed monitoring study. We know that when we do reconstruction with some of these more modern types of uh, implementations, like the crosswalk patterns, uh, we do see speed reductions happening, but installations of four-way stops are not traffic calming. Um, they're counterintuitive to what we're trying to do, which is to move people efficiently through the road. Um, so, uh, Your Worship, the, the recommendations from staff are included in the report, and they, they were presented specifically to, um, to discuss some of Mr. Mooney's comments today. But I'm happy to uh, offer some more suggestions if the Council has any further questions. Okay, thank you for that, Mr. Nickel. I've got Councillor Peter Angelo first up. Yeah, thanks, Your Worship, and um, I guess I just want to thank Mr. Mooney, actually, for coming on the call tonight. I know I've been part of the correspondence a lot that's been going back and forth with staff. Mr. Mooney has, you know, been, uh, I guess, putting his points forward for a lot of years in regards to the traffic condition that exists on Dorchester Road, and, and quite honestly, Your Worship, I don't know that it's the fault of the residents the way that everything has been designed. I think it's just kind of what we've inherited, so, I mean, what we have is we have a commercial node at the corner of Dorchester and McLeod. Then we go through a residential zone and then we hit industrial. So unfortunately, I mean, the traffic patterns are such that we have industrial vehicles going through residential zones. And I know in today's day and age, we try to plan better than that. We don't usually, or we don't ever really allow industrial zones to be at the end of residential zones so that all that traffic goes through there. So I think that's one of Mr. Mooney's strongest points really is the fact that all those industrial vehicles have to go through residential areas. And if there was any way to, you know, slow them down, calm them um, so that the neighborhood doesn't have to, I guess, you know, shake every time they go by, uh, then that would be really appreciated by the residents. So. I mean, I'm happy to support that in any way, Your Worship. I like the idea of reducing the speed to 40 kilometers. I know it doesn't actually hinder traffic. It keeps it flowing, um, but at least it doesn't have it flowing at a high speed um, because w when, when there's big trucks involved and they're going 50 kilometers an hour, it's a lot different than a car going 50, uh, 50 kilometers an hour. You feel it a lot more even if you're out on the sidewalk. So, I mean, I'm happy to support that, and I don't mind passing it... Uh, back to staff to come forward with some recommendations, but I would like to see something done, Your Worship. Okay, fair enough, thank you for that. I've got Councillor Inoni and then Cario. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I am, as Councillor Peter Angelo is talking, after the gentleman just spoke, I'm getting messages from the residents on Drummond Road who want to say to him, thank you very much for coming up to those suggestions because Drummond, I'm sure Mr. Nickel hears from the residents of Drummond Road consistently um, I know in our terms of council, it is the same thing on Drummond Road all the time. And if we're going to implement these kind of measures on Dorchester between McLeod and Oldfield, we should be doing it 
from McLeod Drummond on Drummond from McLeod, and I'm sorry, I don't know the name of the street. Does it end on Oldfield also? Okay, a Drummond and Oldfield also, because we can't do half measures in one and full measures in another. Okay, thank you for that. We've got Councillor Cario. Thank you. Your Worship, uh, I appreciate the concern of the neighbors. I just wonder whether or not we could do some investigating into the businesses. There's not a lot of businesses and whether or not we could go and talk to them and see if they could encourage preferred route for their trucks. I know that that's happened before where you go to a business, if there's two ways to get to it, we might be able to talk to the owners of the businesses and explain to them the problem and might not be able to limit all truck traffic, but if they would work with us and cooperate with us, we might be able to get them to have a preferred route to get to their business businesses as the uh, neighbor's suggestion, not the other way. So I think that we, we could include that and ask the staff if we could contact those uh, businesses and see if there's anything they could do to help with the preferred route instead of going to where they're going, try and get some of that traffic away from the, the kids and the homes, as well as the other suggestions. Sounds good. Sounds like a plan. Um, and I'm sorry, did, did we do the motion already on this one? You the motion. I can, I, I can add to so it. So do you want to do that then? Uh, so you're the mover, uh, Councillor yeah. Strange? I'll add the motion to bring back uh, a report on uh, um, staff report. Uh, yeah, on, so on uh, alternate truck routes, traffic calming, and speed limit reduction. Okay, so that's the and seconded. The, you're good with that, Councillor Pietrangelo? Okay, that's the motion. Councillor. Yep, yeah, Councillor Ianoni. Can that be for both Dorchester and Drummond? Well, we should probably make a separate one because this is just Dorchester. Isn't this report just, is this Dorchester? Yes. Yeah. So why don't we just make a second one and then we can uh, keep it clean and we'll make a separate motion that the same be looked at for, uh, you can bring that up right after if that's okay. Okay, thank you. Okay. So we'll call them. Yeah. Yes. Sorry, through the mayor, just for clarification, is the staff report to come back post reconstruction uh, so that we understand the effects of the reconstruction because and Mr. Nickel can uh, back me on this. Um, you know, generally people drive the speed based upon not the speed limit, but based upon how the road is designed. Um, and therefore, when you change the design of the road, speed habits will change. So I just want to understand that whether you want these recommendations prior to the reconstruction or we do the speed study analysis after the reconstruction and see what the uh, changed behavior is because of the reconstruction. So I just want to know, is this before or after reconstruction? Well, I, I think, and I'll, I, I believe we should do it post construction, see how, how it impacts changes, have, see if speeding is still an issue. But that being said, I think we could do the truck uh, analysis routing, you know, now because I don't think that changes that. But I think on the speed calming issues, I'd like to see what the benefits are of the reconstruction before making suggestions on that. So if that's acceptable, we can work with businesses to see if there's a, di a different route and then do the and then commit to a speed study analysis after the reconstruction. So I'm guessing if trucks are removed, that eliminates a lot of their problems. If if the, there's an alternate yeah. route, and that's and that doesn't impact the design of the exactly. Road. So, yeah. so are you comfortable with that? Mover and seconder. Okay, there you have it, Mr. Nickel. You're good with that. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, great. So let's call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, and that's unanimous. Thank you for that. And now, Councillor Inoni, did you want to make your motion for Drummond Road south of McLeod? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that the same recommendations in order in regards to the heavy construction traffic be implemented from Drummond to Oldfield also. Okay, so truck road, traffic calming and speed limits um, looked at for uh, Drummond, south of McLeod. Okay, okay, that, seconded by Councillor Peter Angelo. We'll call the vote, all those in favor. Okay, and that's unanimous as well. Thank you for that. Okay, item 6.4, Hendershot Boulevard Parking Control Review. There's two recommendations, Councillor Dabrowski. <clears throat> yeah, if I could just speak to this quick, and I brought this up a, a few months back, and there was a, a number of residents in Fernwood that were concerned with, first of all, the, the fact there's only one in, it, in and out of that neighborhood, I think is a challenge already. We have school buses coming in and out of that neighborhood, um, hundreds of families and homes and cars and traffic. Um, so I can see why there's safety concerns. Then I'm looking at the report, and maybe through you to Mr. Nickel, um, in terms of the respondents, it says, 
450 residents uh, were mailed a postcard. Is that homes or residents? Yeah, through you, Mr. Mayor. That was homes, so homes. individual mailings. Okay. So out of the 450, we had um, 160 that responded, right? Residents, homes, right. whatever the case may be. I'm just looking at the sample size because if I read a little deeper into it, so we, we basically had, out of the people that responded, 65% of those that responded um, were in favor of uh, parking restrictions on both sides. And then we had 23% out of the 160 that responded saying they wanted at least one side um, restricted with parking. So it's basically 88% of the people that responded in a neighborhood of over 400 people who are all affected by um, the in and out of that neighborhood because there's only access through one um, collector road. It, it kind of sounds to me like the neighborhood is in agreement that they wanted parking restricted on both sides. So I'm just surprised to see that out of the respondents and out of the, the large number that wanted parking restrictions that we've only included like a little smidgen in red that's outlined of, of restricted parking. I was trying to understand the rationale and it, it you know I, I know there's 18 residents who responded that they they weren't in favor of it and it's probably the 16 or 17 homes that are affected by that that parking but I, I'm still concerned about the safety of all of the residents in that neighborhood with with parking not being restricted on um, one entrance and exit in and out of that neighborhood. You good, Mr. Nickel? Yeah, and thank you, Mr. Mayor. It, it's an important um, it's an important question, and that's why we're here, actually. Um, so this report summarizes two individual surveys: the survey that was done in September, and that's that survey was done of only the affected residents where parking is allowed near the throat as you approach Garner Road. So of that survey, more than 60% said they want it to continue as is, which is parking allowed. When we did, however, the larger survey, um, the numbers you were, you were uh, stating, Councillor, were, you know, were definitely received. So staff were, were weighing the benefits and, and uh, disbenefits of um, those who individually would lose the availability to park uh, cars on the side of their front or the front yards versus those who come through the, the neighborhoods. Our traffic calming policy speaks to those um, individual parking spaces in front of um, residences, and it doesn't speak to to neighbors, you know, outside of a specific study area. Um, but it is important to understand that context. So when we compared the impacts of, um, you know, first of all, the loss of parking and those that live there that don't want to lose that parking, and the fact that there were actually no um, reported or documented safety concerns that staff could observe, uh, we felt that it was prudent to come back with what we'll call the status quo option with a couple of safety modifications. That said, if, if council feels that it, it would like to um, restrict parking, there is no, um, you know, there, there's no negative consequence of that other than the fact that those individual residences who will lose their parking um, will be negatively affected. So I, I think in this case, we're, we have sort of a, two different parties um, who will both be negatively affected and some more than others. So staff tried to do their best to, to stick to what we know is our policy, but we, you know, we'll take direction from council. Yeah, I respect that. But again, it's, we have a neighborhood and I'm not sure if there's any other neighborhoods in the city that have one entrance point and one exit point. Maybe Mr. Nickel can, is it, are there any? Um, it, through you, Mr. Mayor, we, we know we have an uh, emergency uh, secondary access here, but it's, um, it's fairly uncommon to have this, so I can't think of any others off the top of my head. Yeah, it, and just based on that response and the fact that there's so many residents that are, that are concerned with the, the entrance and the exit, and uh, I can respect the fact that we mentioned there, there's been no reported accidents, but a number of residents that I've spoken with within uh, that neighborhood have said there has been accidents and maybe they weren't reported or, or uh, not overly concerning, but I'd hate for us to, to come back in a year and have something happen in that entrance and exit. But um, I'm not sure if I could defer the report. I like everybody to go out and drive through the neighborhood and just see exactly what I'm talking about, especially in the, the early morning hours when buses are, are flying in and out of there. But uh, you know, I, I'd like to see, and from what I'm reading through the, uh, the survey results, it, it looks like the neighborhood and I know only 18 people or 18 homes are affected by um, the no parking, but uh, I, I think it'd be beneficial um, to maybe look at restricting parking on both sides. 
Okay, so are you... Uh, if I... I can make that motion. Do you, do you want to refer this back to staff then? Sure. Okay. So we have a motion by Councillor Dabrowski to refer this back to staff, seconded by Councillor Strange. Is there any discussion to the motion? Okay. All those in favor? Okay. And that's approved. Thank you for that. Unanimously. We've got Councillor Idonian. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, 8.6 Development and Housing Monitor Report 2021. I'm sorry. Oh, I missed one. I'm sorry. Um, 8.5 Plan of Condominium modification to draft plan approval at 4263 4th Avenue. Uh, there are three recommendations here. Motion by Councillor Cario to move the recommendation, second by Councillor Campbell. Is there any discussion to the motion? Councillor Lococo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to make a comment um, to our staff and to the developer that they did put the additional term, the condition in there regarding the record of site uh, condition. It is now there with the, the site number and anyone can go on to the Minister of Environment to read that record of site condition. I will be um, opposed to the recommendation in general just because of um, the cyanamid property next door, but I do thank everybody for putting that record of site condition on there. Okay. Um, so we've got a motion by Councillor Cario, second by Councillor Campbell, that we approve the three recommendations for the report. We'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay. Opposed? Okay, so we got Councillor Iannone and Lococo opposed. Thank you for that. Item 8.6, uh, PBD 2022-28 Development and Housing Monitor Report. In review, the recommendation that Council receive the report. That's moved by Councillor Peter Angelo, second by Councillor Cario. Did you want to speak to it, Councillor? No, I said, I just wondered if everybody... He did get a chance to read it, Your Worship. In the, you know, the housing market, 37, almost 38% increase in the value yeah. of real. Unbelievable. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we'll call the vote. Uh, yes, Councillor Lococo. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I wanted to thank staff for putting that together. I know I talked to Mr. Burgess a while ago about getting some idea about where in the city we could still build, and this report went over and above, and it was really good to get that information. Um, the thing that really hit me, in addition to this 37% increase, was everything that we've done, which is great, hasn't created any affordable housing. So um, that's something that we have to work on um, provincially, but I think locally we really have to... Um, look at that affordable housing piece. Thank you. Affordable housing is getting harder and harder because it's not affordable for anybody. So that that uh, the bar keeps going higher. It's getting more and more difficult. Councillor Kerry. Uh, just to, to that point, your worship, uh, the, the, the federal government just announced a program. Yeah. I wondered whether or not maybe the staff could give us a report on how that could affect our city um, at the next meeting because it's supposedly going to help us give us some money to help with affordable housing. So maybe they could report back to how that specifically could help us and if, you know. Do you want a direction? Okay, so that'll be direction to staff to come yeah. back with that. Yeah, and uh, and I was reading per capita, we of the G7, Canada's got the least amount of uh, housing per capita of all the G7. So we definitely need more housing, Yeah. period. But they've period. allocated a lot of money. Pardon me? They, the Fed's allocated a lot of yeah. money. Yeah, yeah. So they we should sure get a share. Uh, did I call the, no, did we call the vote? No. So we'll call the vote on that. All those in favor? Okay, and that's unanimous. Thank you. Item 8.7, Streamline Development Approval Funding. We have five recommendations here. Motion by Councillor Thompson. Councillor Lococo. Thank you, you Mr. Mayor. I would like to second it. I just want to make a comment that this this is going back to the um, affordable housing task force report and some of the recommendations that were in there. Um, there's two other recommendations. Like we didn't we didn't get a chance to go through it the last time because it was such a big report and it was so late. And we we asked Ms. Dolch to provide comments to the province. Um, some of the things are great to get affordable housing and more housing, and then some of them put some pressure on the municipality. I just want to ensure when we, we sign that agreement that we're not accepting all of the parameters that the federal government are listing. I know I spoke with Ms. Dulch and I know the report says that we're only, we're looking at technology and HR. The ones that I was concerned about was preparing zoning bylaws to accommodate new housing as of right, um, to reveal, uh, review council's decisions regarding community of adjustments and um, development approvals. And I, I just want to ensure that us signing that agreement that we're not agreeing to all of those. 
I yep. don't think we are, but I just want to put it out there. Mr. CAO. Yeah, thank you. Through the chair, uh, that's correct. Uh, our application is specific to the technology and the HR component of it, uh, and anything else that uh, is there would have to go in front of council. We're just not, uh, we're spending our money on the technology part. Thank you. I, I will second the motion. Okay. Thank you for that. If there's no discussion to that motion, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, and that's unanimous. Thank you for that. Uh, consent agenda? Uh, Anything to be uh, lifted? Yes, uh, Councillor Lococo, Councillor Cario. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't know if I'm, um, it's 9.2, the City of Niagara Falls Trust Funds Financial Statements for 2019 is in this section, and then 2020 is in a different section. I is there a reason for that, or it just got stuck under a different section? Uh, who could answer that question? Would that be the clerk or finance? Uh, Mr. Levins. Mr. Levins? Okay. Mr. Mr. Levins, are you on the call? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, uh, great. Did you hear the call? Oh. Here, sorry. No problem. Uh, no, I think the reason this goes uh, to the consent agenda is because um, it's uh, the approval of audited statements. Auditors have looked at it. Uh, it's the trust fund for that's the majority of uh, the cemetery trust. And uh, these are funds put away for far, far in the future when uh, cemeteries become built out. And these are the funds that we rely on to uh, maintain and, and uh, the, the cemeteries in good, good order. Okay, uh, Mr. CAO, did you want to add to that? Yeah, the, the other letters, um, so the, the consent is, the consent item is for the audit that's received. I think the councillor is also referring to 11.6, the City of Niagara Falls Trust uh, Fund Letters for 2020. Uh, so that, sh that was listed under correspondence because that's just, uh, is the independence letter and the pre-audit letter. So those audits haven't yet been completed. So they, that correspondence has been circulated. Uh, so there's no approval required for that. We're just listing that as correspondence. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Carrier. I'm good. Oh, you're good? Okay. So I have a motion by Councillor Peter Angelo that we move the consent agenda, seconded by Councillor Carrier. All those in favor? Okay. And that is approved. Thank you for that. Okay. Where are we now? 10.1. 10.1? Okay. Now we already approved 10.11 earlier. So um, there's a recommendation that we approve and support 10.1 through 10.12. So motion by Councillor Cario that we approve, second by Councillor Thompson. We'll call the vote, all those in favor. Okay, and that is unanimous for that. So now we go to 10 point, let me see here. Nope, so that goes to communications. Okay. Um, now there's a recommendation that council receive and file for information 11.1 through 11.12. What's that? Uh, are we at 11? Yeah, we're at communications now. Uh, Councilor Thompson? Okay. 10.12? Yeah, we just did that all in a block. Yep. Just a quick comment, Your Worship. Uh, to thank Ray and the organizers for putting this together and the staff that helped them. I know that they called and staff was very instrumental in helping them put, put this together. I'm sure they're going to be very happy that they got this approved. Okay. Thank you. Okay, that's awesome. For the Chippewa Fire Hall? Yep. Okay, super. Okay, let me just jump ahead here on my thing. Okay, communications, there we are. Okay, so uh, what's the direction of uh, communications then? I've got council, yes, Councilor Iannone? I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor, what did we just approve? Uh, we did, what did we do, 10.1 and 10.12? If I could just reiterate here, uh, again, this is our maybe our second or third council meeting where we're trying to lump together the different correspondence uh, or communications of the city clerk. So section 10 dealt with communications, but those were all communications that staff were recommending for approval. Uh, that's been uh, passed. Now we're on section 11, which is still communications of the city clerk. And all of these from 10.1 through to, or sorry, from 11.1 through to 11.12 are uh, being recommended they be 
received for information. I'd like to pull 11.12, please. Okay, so 11.12. Okay, so 11.12. And I will really quickly just uh, mention for uh, communications, we had, a, we had approved in block a proclamation request for Jewish Heritage Month for May. We approved flag raising Croatian flag for May 27th. Proclamation and flag lowering for National Day of Mourning, April 28th. Proclamation request Moose, Moose Hide Campaign Day for May the 12th. Also, proclamation request the longest day of smiles, which is June 19th for kids with cleft. Uh, proclamation request we approved World Hepatitis Day on June 28th. Apraxia Awareness Day on May 14th. Noise bylaw exemption for May the 29th. And uh, Niagara Falls Rotary Rib Fest fee waiver request for their Rib Fest June 17th, 18th, 19th. Proclamation request Fallon Daffa Day. Proclamation, that's uh, May 13th. Proclamation request 120th anniversary of Rebbe's birth, leader of the Jewish people, which we had already done. The Chippewa Car Show and Cruise Nights that we approved for Wednesday nights from May 4th through September the 28th. So now we go to communications. Councilor Iannone has asked us to lift 11.12. Uh, is there anything else to be lifted before we pass the balance that Councilor... Uh... Mr. Mayor, yes. can I, I... I didn't want to lift it and have an intense discussion. I, I wasn't sure how, how to do that, but there's a lot in that that I didn't get a chance to read today. And while I understand his his determination. I'd like to, can we defer receiving and filing this into the next meeting, please? Okay, so let's just go, so that's 11 point? At 11.12. 11 11.12, 11.12. Yeah, I'd like to have a discussion on it, but I really didn't get a chance to go through point by point, and, and I, I think it deserves a bigger discussion than just receive and file. Well, I thank him for his determination. I really think there needs to be, be a bigger discussion in that. And then I would like to talk when we get to, I'm confused how you do this communications, but then I'd like to speak to 12.2 also, please. Okay, now 11.12, it's- Oh, okay. So do 11 I- 11.12, I'm so, looking at, and that's, is that not the integrity commissioner? Yes, so what the counselor, Peter Angelo just suggested, then why don't we just defer both of them? And bring them both back at the next meeting, if that's I the would, case. We can, we can do that because I think I really think it needs a bigger discussion. Okay, so so um, so then a motion. Do you want to? Are you doing a motion then to defer them? Sure. Okay. To defer defer what? Yeah. Okay. It's motion to defer the two integrity commission reports eleven point one two and twelve point two. Is that the motion? Yes. To which meeting? Pardon me? To the next meeting? To the next meeting. Okay. All right. So do we have a seconder for that? Do we have a seconder to defer them? Councillor Lococo? Okay. Do we have any discussion to the deferral, to defer both reports to? Mr. May, I, I'm, yes, I'm getting confused here. I, I, I just don't want to discuss 11.12 tonight. I, not the second one. The second one I think we need to discuss tonight. So just 11.12, I'm sorry. Okay, well, is there, yes, Councilor, or uh, CAO? Yeah, so I would, I wouldn't admit that to be one requires a suspension or a suspension, so I do what she says, just deal with 11.12. One at a time? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. we'll do one at a time then. We'll do, so okay. I just want to defer this one to a bigger discussion, and that's not a receive and file at the next meeting, and address the next one at this meeting. Okay, so your motion is then simply to defer 11.12 to the next meeting. Yes, please. Okay, motion by Councillor Iannone, second by Councillor Lococo. Any discussion to the motion? So, so the motion is to defer only okay. one of those discussions? Yeah, uh, only one of oh, them. Yeah, is no discussion? Oh, I'm sorry. There's no discussion. Well, it, you can ask for the Yeah, yes, okay. To, I'm sorry, the question was to the next meeting, is that yes? Oh, which one? Oh, uh, 11.12. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? 
Okay, opposed? Okay, so no, there's not enough support to defer it. Well, it's just receive and file. Um, okay, well, we can talk about it. I mean, we could okay. we can talk about it. So, okay, why don't we do this then? Let's pass the remainder of the, um, of the um, communications with the exception of that one because Councillor Peter Angel already had a motion. So yeah, I, have a, I have a partial conflict on one of them, but I'm happy to move to the next one. Uh, you have, which one's that? Uh, 11, 10, I think. Niagara Regional Correspondence? Conflict, yeah. Pardon me? Partial conflict, but not on the whole thing. You've got it? Okay, the clerk's got it. Okay, so we've got a motion to receive the rest of the correspondence with the exception 11.12. Moved by Councillor Peter Angelo, seconded by Councillor Dabrowski. All those in favor? Okay, that's unanimous. Okay, uh, Councillor Iannone, 11.12, you have the floor. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I'm just trying to make sure I have the right one in front of me. Okay, Mr. Mr. Um, McDermott finds me not in contravention in this, and, and fine. And I'm ha glad he did that. But I, I would really like council to have a more in-depth discussion in regards to um, how we are doing in camera, how we are restricting note-taking, how we are um, addressed just reading the documentation when we get there. And the reason I asked for it deferred was I just skimmed over this one and I haven't read it in, in full, but I think the problem is we just, is we need a better discussion on it. Not a fight, not, not anything getting hot, not losing tempers, just a real discussion on how we're dealing with in camera. And I, I would ra rather do that having read through it, made my own notes on what I personally want to discuss, or we can just receive and file it. If you want, I can bring those issues up later, but at the next meeting, but they really do go hand in hand. Okay, well, uh, so are you, are you still uh, talking or are you? No, I, I there's, there's nothing I, that, it's the next one that is, is I need to talk on, but this one I just needed to be able to say, I'd like to, discuss it at the next meeting. But I can discuss those issues and not the report in itself at the next meeting. Okay, uh, okay, I've got uh, Councilor I know that sounds confusing. I know that sounds confusing and I don't mean it to be, but I think I think there's a bigger issue than what he wrote here. Okay, so I've got Councilor Dabrowski, then Cario. Yeah, I don't think anything sounds confusing. In terms of our in-camera process, anyone can stand up and, and Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure it was clear that we were not to take notes of in camera meetings. We were not to bring in electronic devices. Um, I, I'm not sure why there's any confusion. And if somebody can stand up and tell me that they don't um, remember what our process was or the process that we've been respecting for the past year and a half or two years with respect to note taking and electronic devices, I'd be a little shocked and surprised, but uh, that's the way I, I've understood it. It's never been a, you know, a gray area. It's been pretty black and white to me, but uh, I, I'm not sure what sort of discussion further we can have on that, but uh, that's the way I understood it. And uh, if anyone else around the table maybe wants to uh, disagree, they're more than welcome, but that's the way I've understood it for years. Okay, I've got Councillor Cario, then I'll come back to you, Councillor Ainoni. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, well, we've been, do we've been doing this since uh, way back when. I can't remember exact date, but I, I didn't have any problems with it, Your Worship. I didn't have any problems adhering to the rules that council outlined that were suggested by staff in order to keep the documentation confidential and protect the assets of the citizens of Niagara Falls. I have no problem doing that. If someone wants to bring up some other ideas, I'm perfectly, uh, I'll listen. And we have a discussion, absolutely a civil discussion. But pertaining to what happened with this particular integrity commissioner report, I read it word for word a couple of times, and, and I see that, um, and I'm assuming that staff and everybody's read it, and the problem, the reason that, uh, that it turned out the way it was, was because council did not um, carry through and officially adopt 
the recommendations of staff into our code of conduct. I just wanted to have the staff clear that up and make sure I read this properly, properly, that that was the reason why this happened the way it did, that we did not follow through and officially adopt the recommendations that staff made about uh, electronic um, devices and removing of documentation from an in-camera session. Did I read that correctly? Has anybody else read it or legal or mail or that like to comment on if I read that properly? Because then if I did, I have a, a motion to make. Okay, Mr. Clerk. Uh, yes, uh, through your worship, uh, I also read it that way as well. Um, I think the uh, integrity commissioner sums up his uh, findings in the second last paragraph on page 12. But I think what Councillor Curio is referring to is the suggestion at the bottom half of page 11 of his report, where really uh, he suggests that the easiest step here would have been for council to pass that resolution back in March of 2020. Uh, I was following the direction of, of council uh, previously when I wrote that uh, memo, just outlining uh, what the steps would be for the in-camera process. Uh, unfortunately, I should have also included a recommendation, I suppose, to have the code of conduct updated to reflect those steps. And I believe that is what the integrity commissioner is doing here in his report, is he's suggesting uh, a proper way of doing that and even uses the example for the town of Pelham's code, uh, which uh, does lay out that process. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Clerk, and, and that's what, what I wanted to do was uh, clean up that housekeeping issue, and until we change it, then make it so that if, if this happens again, it, it, we all understood it to be a, a code of conflict breach. I, I thought that would be a code of conflict breach, that if that happened, but after I read the report by, a very well-written report by the Integrity Commissioner, we did not follow through and put it in, so I'm suggesting that either you bring back a report and we do it, or we do it today so that um, all of us follow what we think we've been following since this was um, instituted. So I just think we clean it up until we change it so that, you know, that, that at least we, have, we are not supposed to take documentations out. We don't take documentation out until we change it. Now, if we want to have a discussion and talk about the procedures, I mean, I, I'm okay with that too, but at least let's, at least let's clean up what we think we were doing so that at least we have the ability to tell each other that you can't take documentations out and we have the teeth that's in our code and I suggest that either staff come back with that or we do it tonight. That's but, my suggestion. So you want, is that a motion? If, just if, if, Mr. Mayor, if Councillor Curio wants to make a motion for staff to come back with a report, I would happily second that because I have a number of questions I'd like to send staff that I haven't had an opportunity to do before now, which is why I wanted it to but if he wants to do it, do it via a report at the next meeting, I would happily second that. I, I have no problem, Your Worship. It's up to staff if they want to take a little bit of time making sure. I want to make sure it's done properly. I prefer, I, to, I prefer to prefer to have it come back, right? Yeah, two cycles. Two cycles. Okay. Okay. So uh, they're suggesting two cycles, so in two meetings. Okay, that's fine by me. I'd, I'd I'd make that motion. Okay, did you get that, uh, Mr. Clerk? You got that? Like, okay, so motion by Councillor Carrier, second by Councillor Inoni. Is if there's uh, no further discussion at this point, we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay, and that's unanimous. All right, thank you for that. And we've already done the rest of the correspondence, or of the, uh, yeah, of the, uh, is that correspondence? There's two more communications in section 12. Okay. Okay, so then we go to, sorry, section 12. Okay, communications, uh, Niagara Region correspondence regarding 2022, oh, uh, moving transit forward. So, uh, Mr. Clerk, did you wanna to speak to this, uh, this one here? Yeah, um, so the region has written some, cor or some correspondence to us uh, in regards to uh, the dissolving of the linking Niagara Transit Committee. Um, in place of that, there'll be a Niagara Transit Commission board. And we previously had the mayor on that uh, linking Niagara Transit Committee. Uh, it was uh, brought to my attention that he had stepped down uh, earlier in this term. And then we also had Councillor Dabrowski sitting on that committee. Uh, because the mayor had stepped down, 
Uh, we do have interest from regional councillor Barbara Greenwood to sit on that committee, uh, and councillor Dabrowski has also uh, suggested that he would be willing to continue as that committee transitions from uh, one name to another. So the recommendation before council here is that council could submit appointee nominees uh, recommendations of councillor Dabrowski and regional councillor Barbara Greenwood to this new transitional board um, of the uh, Regional Transit Commission. Okay, so we're looking for a motion of council to have these moved by Councillor Campbell, second by Councillor Strange. We'll call the vote, all those in favor? Okay, and that's unanimous, thank you for that. And then item 11, uh, I'm sorry, 12.2, Integrity Commission Report, <laughs> Council, yes, uh, Councillor Iannone. Thank you. First of all, I wanna state that I agree with Mr. McDermott's report and I, and I wanna say why. At the last council meeting, I was very critical of your tone and comments to Council Lococo and to myself. And you know, when you come, I came home and as I'm decompressing, the hypocrisy of my words in that council chamber did not escape me. I did the same thing and spoke the same way on Facebook and in the newspaper that I am critical about you every time. And that makes me a hypocrite. It doesn't matter why I did it. It doesn't matter all the personal reasons, all of those things. I have stood in this council chamber and, and quite frankly, I was really determined to come there tonight because I thought I owed you an apology in person and if I could get past the number of people in a room and my anxiety on that yet, I would be there. But I, I was hypocritical, I was nasty, I was mean, I was arrogant. The, I, I've gone through the whole litany of things in my head and it's because of the last meeting, and I know this sounds extremely silly, but when the world watched Will Smith smack Chris Rock, I had conversations with people and said, you know, it doesn't matter why he did it, it was wrong. And I couldn't escape the fact that that's exactly what I did. Doesn't matter what I felt, doesn't matter. None of the frustration mattered. I was wrong, I broke the code. I apologize sincerely to you and I will accept any recommendation or reprimand or consequence that this council enforces. But I wanted you to know that I sincerely apologize for making those statements on Facebook and in the newspaper. Thank you for that, Councillor. Okay, um, so <laughs> next steps, yes. Uh, Councillor Strange. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And, and I, I, we, we, I'm sure we all accept her apology, and it's been a few months now. And, and the problem with it is that it's been, and we gave her an opportunity to apologize right after the incident. Um, it's something, and, and I realize it's, it's so bullish and harassment for someone to call someone a despicable human being and a horrible excuse for a mayor is something, you know, it's against you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and it's just a lack of respect. If I said that about the president of the Real Estate Council of Ontario, I would be fined. I probably might be uh, uh, suspended or got revoked of my license as a real estate agent. If Councillor Peter Angelo said something like that to the, some of the head of the Board of Education, he would probably be removed from being a teacher or be fined. And it's something we, you know, we, we teach kids and when you're younger not to, to harass people, not to be bullish. And it's just a, a, a lack of empathy and, and consideration, not only for you, Mayor, but for your three children your parents and all your family. Can you imagine your three children that have to go to school the next day knowing that you have been called a despicable human being and an ex a horrible excuse for a mayor? I just can't imagine what those kids went through knowing that they, someone called you their father that. And whether you're, you know, your mother heard it, your father heard it, your, your brother, your, your sister, 
And it's, it's something that is, is really horrible. It really is. And, you know, we'll, I do, we do obviously accept her apology, but it's something that's just, it's, it's unfoundable now because we teach, especially now in this atmosphere, we all teach kids coming home, and especially on social media, and the, the mental health part of it, that kids are getting bullied on Facebook nonstop through stuff like this. It's, it's very, uh, it's unbelievable. So it's, 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 it's almost something that like Donald Trump would say. Mr. Mayor. He really would. He's got the floor right now, Councilor. And I, and it just, got... it's, it's unbelievable because you hear this stuff and it's just, okay, you know, we gave the opportunity to apologize. And I do accept your apology, but it's something that, that, <laughs> that, those, that your kids, your family can't take back when they went to work or they went to school the next day. So I just want to point that out. Thank you, Councillor. I've got, just before you go, Councillor Inoni, I've got Councillor Peter Angelo, and then you'll be up next. Uh, thanks, Your Worship. Uh, yeah, Mike, I agree with you. I mean, if I would have said something like that to the Director of Education, yeah, I wouldn't be a teacher anymore. Um, Your Worship, there's just a couple of parts of the report that, that I want to speak about. One is, uh, I think on page 14 in the report, there's a whole section titled, A Difficult Decision. And I think I'm understanding it correctly, where the integrity commissioner explains that, you know, having come back in the room, Councillor Lococo then went and told Councillor Inoni that you, that you said something. So Councillor Inoni complained to the integrity commissioner, well, he said this and that's why I said this. And so the integrity commissioner has to investigate these things. And he investigates it, he talks to every single staff member that was in the room. And there isn't one staff member that heard you say that, talks to you. And you say, no, I never said anything of the sort. Talks to Councillor Lococo. I believe he did. And then says, wait, hang on a second. There's an audio recording of the whole conversation because it's in camera. Listens to the audio recording and can't find one shred of evidence that any of those words were spoken. There's a reason why you put that in the report. I mean, it leaves me with one word. Hmm. That's about the, that's about the way that I sum that up. Hmm. But, Your Worship, I just want to get to, as well, kind of the, the heart of the defense, which is, I believe in what I'm saying, so I can say it. And, you know, I think it's so counterintuitive because if you really do believe in all the movements that are out there, whether it be anti-racism or anti-bullying, gender equality, uh, diversity and inclusion, I mean, you have to be aware that your words have an impact on other people. And to think that your only defense is gonna be that I believe it, therefore I can say it, really gives credence to the other side, not to the movements. It, it, it's so counterintuitive as a leader to profess that as a belief. And I really hope that Councilor Iannone stands up and says that that belief in itself is wrong. It's wrong. We have to be aware. We have to have temperance in our words and our thoughts, Your Worship. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you for that, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Iannone. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've apologized, and, and, and I hope you've accepted it was sincere. But I, I want to go back to exactly what just happened there. And that is no different except for Councillor Peter Angelo and Strange's perception than Councillor Lococo standing up at the last meeting telling you how she felt and none of it was good. This, this didn't happen at the last meeting. Nobody stood up and, and acknowledged her feelings. Nobody, everything she said was dismissed. So I'm, I am not going to get into a debate on whether I think those two statements are hypocritical. I thought it would be difficult to apologize to you. It wasn't. 
I actually was, I, I really wanted this part of the meeting to get here. There can be epiphanies. People make, I can, I can give you a thousand examples of what I think is bullying around that council chamber, but that still doesn't give me the right to go in a newspaper and speak about you personally. I can speak about it politically, but I cannot take a personal shot at you. And I did, and it was wrong. And whether you, and I honestly did not think it was wrong when I did it. It wasn't until I was judging other people doing the same thing I did that it became extremely clear to me what a hypocrite I was being. So they can stand up and admonish me all they want. They don't know what's in my head. They don't know what I'm feeling. I feel better apologizing to you, but to make the comments that, and I'm sorry your children and family read that, but nobody around that table has ever issued the same thing on the things my family have heard and what my family have read. And I haven't asked for it, but it just builds up and builds up. No excuses. And an apology is not an apology with but, and I thought maybe they would have accepted that with grace rather than try to tear me down more. Because you can't feel worse than I already feel for breaking my own code of conduct and behaving like that. And I never speak like this. I haven't apologized once for anything. I accept what any recommendation you're gonna put forward. But if I'm hurt when I leave there on the things you say to me, why would I not expect you to be hurt on the terrible things I said about you? So you can sincerely accept it, you can criticize it, you can say what you want, but my apology was said to you without a but and sincerely meant. Thank you for that. Councillor Coco. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to comment on um, Councillor Peter Angelo's comments because when I read the Integrity Commissioner report, I was a little confused with some of the, the wording that he chose. On page 14, um, he, he basically says that... Um, I particularly interviewed Councillor Lococo who could not say the mayor actually used those words. It was a difficult decision, but she believed that he said something to this effect while explaining why the essential oils has been originally introduced. So right from that night when that whole conversation was going on, I really believe there was something that you said in between there. And when I went home, the main concern was to talk to Councillor Iannone because she was ill. I didn't talk to her about what happened. She is allowed to know what happened in in camera. I didn't talk to her about what happened. The next day, right from day one, I, I said that I thought you said something about difficult decision, hard decision, something to that effect, those words. What I'm finding with the integrity commissioner is that he, there's sort of semantics with words. Earlier in the report, it was about, um, was it um, the direction of the mayor or was it the request of the mayor? Those are synonymous, they, they work together. So if it's one, maybe I was wrong with the words. So when I spoke to the integrity commissioner, I said, I don't know what the exact words are, but that's what I felt I heard. So when I went home, that's what I thought you said. And again, if that didn't happen, I will be the first one to apologize. I did contact um, um, the integrity commissioner and he basically said, it's not his practice to engage in debate or explanation of the decision. I didn't want to talk to him about the decision, but I did want to confirm what I said to him. When, once again, there is no objective evidence to support the allegation that the mayor said this innocuous statement. It's a difficult situation, but there is evidence from the councillor herself and the record of the meeting that he never said it was a difficult decision. I didn't say you didn't say that. And I said there were words to the effect. So I don't know if it was tough call, hard call, but that's what I truly felt when I left that meeting. And I was relaying that to Councillor Iannone. And I apologize to her and to you if that was incorrect because it did cause some extra conflict. There was already conflict there about the diffusers, but that's what I sincerely heard. So I wanted to talk to the integrity commissioner about that because he's quoting all of those words and I wanted to ask him, well, did you hear the word tough call or something like that? But he, he, he will not debate or discuss after that. So I, that's all I wanted to say. And if that is incorrect, I do apologize. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Carrio. Your Worship, 
everyone's done, I would just like to carry on with the financial aspect of this. I think that um, the apology between you and it's between you and Councillor Iannone, I'm not going to comment on that right now, but I think that because the taxpayers of the municipality are going to be faced with a bill, from what I've seen in the past, somewhere between ten and twenty thousand dollars for this, which could have been avoided, I'm going to make a recommendation, Your Worship, that the council imposes number B, uh, the penalty that's suggested by the Integrity Commissioner of uh, three months suspension of pay for the councillor, and that would at least help pay for the it would help to pay for the uh, the report. So that would be my motion, Your Worship. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, we have a motion by Councillor Cario, second by Councillor Dabrowski. Do we have debate on the motion? Yes, Councillor Coco. I don't really want to debate the motion, but I am going to abstain from this. And the reason why I'm abstaining is when we were talking about um, in, uh, the code of conduct, I did not think it was appropriate that the council could file a report against another council, uh, against another council member. If it was between two people, I felt the two people should have. The other one um, regarding uh, the documents, that was something I, I could see the council putting a complaint in. This one, I will not um, vote on it based on what I said before. So I will be abstaining. I think an abs uh, uh, abstaining is a no, is it not, Mr. Clerk? Yes. So that'll be recorded as a no, opposed. You can't not vote on something unless you have a conflict. Okay, thank you. Is there any other discussion to the motion? Okay, seeing none. And we'll call the vote. All those in favor? Opposed? Okay. Mr. Mayor, I think I have to declare conflict on that. Okay. Uh, with one declared conflict? Okay. And can I just raise another issue in, along these same lines? Yes. So I, I want to ask the process issue. Councillor Peter Angelo stood up in council chambers and asked for us to have mediation. Council voted yes to do it, and we haven't done it. That was one of my discussions with Mr. McDermott. And I, I had issues with Mr. McDermott's report too. I also emailed him, interestingly enough, on Councillor Peter Angelo's comments and asked him to clarify so that I could be clear what he was saying, and he wouldn't respond to me either. He said he didn't have that discussion after a report was written but I wanted that confusion cleared up. Um, but we made a motion and our motion hasn't been followed. We haven't had mediation. And I told Mr. McDermott that I thought this probably could have been fixed if we had set boundaries or parameters. I, I, I don't think we have, but there was a reason that motion was made. Why have we not followed through in it? And I told Mr. McDermott that I've asked this question before and we were told that he didn't want to follow through with it because he had reports there. And I asked him, are you now going to do that? And he said, I'm sorry, counselor, I can't answer that question. But Mr. McDermott's not the only person who could do mediation with us, which is, I, I, I don't understand if we have processes and we're supposed to follow our motions, why we haven't followed that through because it, it is absolutely contrary to the discussion that Councillor Peter Angelo had that night. Okay, Councillor, so, uh, I can ask the uh, clerk if he uh, could weigh in on this, uh, help us through it. Uh, I think my simplest explanation is uh, I would just echo what uh, Councillor Arnone had just stated. I have been in conversation with the Integrity Commissioner. Um, I've been reminding him uh, about this request of Council and um, it, it's still on our radar and now that uh, the slate is cl cleared so to speak and he doesn't have any other reports outstanding or any other complaints to deal with uh, staff will follow up with him and if he's not available uh, we will take that direction and see if we can uh, reach out and get some um, other appropriate uh, people to come in and, and speak to this council in, in an education session mr. mayor yes councillor when, when I went back and watched that motion, and we didn't, we didn't designate it be Mr. McDermott. So how is it that we couldn't have gone to somebody else? We, we, there's many mediation groups out there. There's many mediators, private mediators. He's a private mediator. So why, why did we just put all our, our 
focus into Mr. McDermott rather than fix what we know is broken and leave it this long because we didn't specify Mr. McDermott. I, th I think just because we had asked our integrity commissioner and this is the person mm -hmm. we've hired to be our, our uh, referee uh, and he had offered and I, I think even, I don't even know if he was gonna charge us for it. Uh, so he had we, offered? Yeah, he was gonna do it for us. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, so. Because I, I had this conversation with him and I didn't get that perspective at all. So why did he, why would he offer to do it? Who contacted him? Because if he offered, why did he, why did he then say no? Well, maybe we'll, our CAO is going to weigh in, Councillor. Yeah, and, I, and to be clear, I wasn't here at the time, but uh, generally this goes to the appointed integrity commissioner. Otherwise, you'd have to do a procurement process to obtain uh, one in a competitive process. But because you already have one under retainer, the natural item is to go to the one that you have under retainer uh, to avoid a procurement process. Uh, generally, it's done a little bit more rapidly. I think the issue that this integrity commissioner had was he had outstanding reports and he thought it was inappropriate to undertake one of those sessions while he was still going to be ruling on items. I believe now his docket is clear, um, so we can ask him to uh, schedule at that point in time. However, if council wishes to, uh, if council wishes not to use it, you know, the council can direct staff on that and council, if you wanted to move it quicker, could give delegated authority for a, for a single source appointment. Um, but um, other than that, we would generally go to the one who's already been approved by council for that service. So has he said he's, his docket is clear now? Mr. Clear? Yeah, I don't think it's appropriate to debate this right now. Uh, it's very easy, it's very easy to, excuse me, it's very easy to suggest uh, that it wasn't done properly because it's all in hindsight. But at the time, like the uh, CEO just pointed out, that is our integrity commission. It would have been most appropriate for him uh, to implement that uh, mediation session. So staff are gonna follow up on on that this week and then we'll, then we'll, we'll hear back, I guess, right? Yeah, yeah. So, Mr. Mayor, let's, I need to leave this so that I understand this clearly. So, if Mr. McDermott is not available, are you, is, are they going to look at someone else? Will we know this by the next meeting? Yep, uh, CAO said yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councilor Coco. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I attended um, two sessions last week, Navigating Conflict in Municipal Government, and the mediator was excellent. So if you are looking for um, a name, if we have to go outside and procure someone, if we could do sole source, I will provide you that information. He was excellent. I learned a lot in those two sessions. Thank you for that. Uh, yes, Councillor Kerry. Not to belabor this, Your Worship, but um, if the Integrity Commissioner that we've already appointed is going to do it and he's not going to charge us because of all the work that he's been that some of us have given him that maybe he's going to give us a, a you know a, a freebie mm -hmm. uh, i would like to take advantage of him on that and see if he's prepared to come and give us a little help that way i'd rather do that or if we're going to look at someone else after all the money that we spent i'd like to get a price before we agree to do anything else if he's going to come and do it great but if he's not we're going to have to go out and get someone i'd like to know how much it's going to cost the taxpayers Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Strange? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think the, the, the mediation through this Integrity Commission report was the opportunity to apologize beforehand. Can't wait, not apologize, has a report come out, found guilty, and then apologize. You were offered the mediation beforehand. Just apologize. This goes away. And it didn't happen. Actually, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Councillor? Actually, Councillor Strange, through you to Councillor Strange, speak informed, because I offered mediation between the mayor and I, and was told no. Yeah. Yeah. So you are wrong. Yeah. Well, yeah. you were asked to apologize. You, you said no. No? Am I incorrect by you offering to apologize and you said no? You can't. You can't play the victim here because the mayor was the victim. <laughs> Councillor Strange. You are so overstepping your bounds, and I know the mayor's yeah. the chair there. Okay, folks, you know what? I'm going to stop this right can now. I we're not, no, we're Mr. not mayor, going. Can I just, 
because I we're not going we're not going anywhere positive counselor we got to move forward we, we don't want to get into you know pointing yeah, fingers you should well, we've got before we've got ratification of in camera. Oh, okay. uh, next up, Mr. Clerk, uh, do we have some ratification of in camera? Yes, uh, Council met earlier this afternoon for a couple of matters in camera. Uh, the first one being uh, a matter with the Niagara Falls Public Library that was passed on the open agenda tonight as item 9.3 on the consent agenda. The second uh, matter, uh, there was two recommendations. First one being uh, that council authorize the mayor and city clerk to act on, act on behalf of the city to execute the assignment of lease of the Center Court Cafe at the McBain Community Center from 1939099 Ontario Limited to 11th Hour Foods Incorporated. And the second recommendation being that the mayor and city clerk and city solicitor be authorized to prepare, review and execute whatever documents are required to complete this assignment. Okay, uh, looking motion. motion by Councillor Peter Angelo, second by Councillor Strange, that we ratify the in camera. All those in favor? Okay, Councillor Ionone? Oh no, you're, uh, yep, okay, uh, that's approved. Motion by Councillor Peter Angelo uh, to give the bylaws a first, second, and third reading. Uh, seconded by uh, Councillor uh, Campbell. All those in favor? Okay, and that's approved unanimously. Thank you for that. We're now in uh, new business. Councillor Cario, Dabrowski, Strange. Thank you, Worship. Worship, uh, I've gotten a lot of calls and I called you on this issue. Um, the road, um, there's a couple of roads that people are complaining about. Kayla Road from Thorold's, Thoroldstone Road to Niven, it's about 300 feet that are in terrible shape. And then Garner Road, I know there's a lot of roads that need work and I, I, I think you've already said you talked to Mr. Nichols about it. And, um, and Garner Road, south from Beaver Dams Road to Hendershot, and then on Garner Road from Lundy's Lane uh, to just past Forest View. As a matter of fact, Garner Road is bad all the way to McLeod, but I don't know if there's something we can do, um, whether or not we have money in the budget or whether this gonna be done, could be done now, but it's terrible. Uh, the shoulders are bad, the road's bad, it needs to be, it needs to be repaired badly. Okay. It, look, it looks like, I don't know if well, I see Mr. Nichols, comment. Mr. Nichols just jumped on the screen. Okay. Uh, so we'll give him a chance to address that. Mr. Nichol. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And for you, um, what I'd like to do is, uh, is come back to council at our next meeting with the report that will outline uh, some options for council to consider. Um, those specific locations weren't in our initial 2022 budget, um, but we will look at some options based on the tenders that went out to potentially include some work um, under the contracts that we have existing for this year. And to, the work that is required is extensive. They're the quite lengthy roads, and there is future development on those roads, so we're reluctant to make major investments now. Um, but nonetheless, they need something needs to be done. I do completely agree with that. So. I'll be coming back to you at our next meeting with um, a list of options, uh, so how we can address Thank those you. and the funding sources for them as well. Same thing? Okay, yeah. that's great. Thank you, Mr. Nickel. Uh, Councilor Peter Angel on the same topic? Yeah, thanks, Your Worship. The issue that I was gonna address kind of relates to this because it was a letter that was sent in by uh, Amici Per La Vita, the cycling club, mm -hmm. and they talk about you know Gardner Road, the condition of it, and the fact that they had a group ride going, and the lead person uh, you know, hit a succession of potholes and, um, wiped out on their bike. I know Mr. I know Mr. Burgess can relate to that. Um, <laughs> and subsequently uh, was injured and had damages to their bike. So I was just hoping as well that, that we can reach out to, uh, to the Amici group. Um, they're a strong riding group in our community. I know they love to use our roads, uh, especially the ones that are in good condition. And as the uh, season is fast approaching, I know they always like to be in communication with staff, especially in regards to the street sweeping, so that they can go on roads that have already been uh, swept. So hopefully I can ask Mr. Nickel um, to reach out to the Amici group, uh, and that can be part of the recommendation as well. Okay, great. Are you good with that, uh, Mr. Nickel? Yes, Mr. Mayor, no problem. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you for that. So do we just, do we need anything? Just a direction we don't need? Okay, don't need a motion. Okay, thank you for that, Councillor Cario. Any, anything else? I'm good, thank you. Okay, uh, Councillor Dabrowski, then Strange, then Peter Angelo. Yeah, two quick things. The first one, um, I didn't 
realize this until speaking to a few family members who, who are pet owners, but three in 10 Canadians adopted a pet wow. during COVID. Crazy to think. Wow. It's huge. Um, and in speaking with someone, and I, I read something on social media and was speaking to a couple of residents about it as well, but there's a, a program, I think it's in Ottawa, where uh, pet owners can put a, a sticker decal on the front of their home, like in their, on their front door or in the window, that would alert rescuers. So if, let's say there was a house fire and the resident wasn't home, would alert the, uh, the rescuers, whether it be the fire department or the police department, on if there were any pets in the home and how many pets are in the home. And I thought it, it could be an initiative we could bring forward here in Niagara Falls. So I was wondering, I wrote a motion, I didn't follow process, uh, Mr. Clerk, but hear me out here, but wanted to make a motion that fire services in consultation with our local Humane Society, uh, SPCA, work with our communications department to investigate the process and cost to implement uh, a sticker program, not sure what we would call it, but a, a pet safety sticker program, decal program, um, for residents, for their front doors, indicating how many pets they have inside their home. Um, and maybe we can get a report back to council from staff on, on what the partnership could look like and, and what uh, a potential program could look like and of course what the costs associated would be. But there's a, a ton of homeowners that are, that are pet lovers and, and that are home to pet. I, I believe Councillor Strange just went on a, an epic road trip with his little princess there. But uh, yeah, there, there's nothing more important than, than pets to a lot of, a lot of pet owners and, and I think this would be a, a great way to uh, alert you know, any potential hazards which we hope we don't see um, and let rescuers know how many pets are in the home. So why don't you put that That's a forward. great idea. So uh, just before you do, did you want to speak to that, uh, Mr. Sierra? Uh, yeah, through, sorry, through the mayor, uh, maybe to avoid uh, uh, staff chastising you for notice of motion, we can just take that as a direction. Sorry. Um, a direction of staff, and I would just also include clerks because I think uh, there would probably be a way to do that through the licensing, uh, pet licensing, and include okay. it as part, you know, you get your license and you can get a sticker yep. and do it as a combo package. So I would uh, do it uh, do it through that. So we'll take it as direction and we'll report back in a couple of cycles on that. All right, cool. Couple of cycles? Uh, I would say two. Yeah, just give us two. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, That's your penalty for not doing a notice. Yeah, sir. Well, I have another one coming, so. <laughs> okay. Um, downtown Niagara Falls, I get my hair cut there, I shop downtown. Um, spoke with a, a number of business owners over the past couple of months and they were wondering, and we've done it before downtown, I'm not sure if I was a council member at the time, free parking. I'm sure the CEO's not liking this one. But hoping to get a staff report back, we, we've had so many business openings and obviously with the pandemic hopefully behind us, um, a lot of business owners I think would benefit from, from the quick parking, from the pharmacy pickups, and it would help the, the other businesses beside the other businesses. I, I think it'd be a win-win for everybody. But looking to maybe get a report back from staff on three or four different options on what 30 minute free parking would look like, 60 minute, 90 minute, what the cost associated would be, who'd be responsible, would it be a BIA initiative, would we, would we help um, in terms of uh, the financial aspect? But uh, again, not sure if it's a motion, but maybe the CEO can help provide some insight. Um, through the mayor to the councillor and council um, and Mr. Nickel, if he's still on, uh, we do have a uh, downtown parking study uh, that we're going to undertake uh, to understand the demands. Um, and we can, uh, I'll look to Mr. Nickel to see whether we can integrate some uh, strategies um, into that. We do have two hour, uh, you know, some two hour parking spots yeah. and that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, but I think there is a, we need to relook at downtown parking. Uh, extensively because hopefully some of the uh, development that we're going to have on there uh, and the challenge has been it's been delayed because we can't do a parking study during COVID times because it's not normalized business but uh, I'll let Mr. Nichols see if I did anything wrong on that one. Uh, thank you and through you Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Burgess uh, said a lot of right things but I think if we're talking about convenience of parking on street which is where the metered parking is taking place right now um, nothing much changes in terms of availability if you make it free or people are paying. Um, if you make it free, you may see a few more people uh, use those spaces, but it has to be turnover parking. So it has to be 30, 60, 90. Otherwise the shop patrons or the, the, the folks that um, work there um, will, uh, will take advantage of that space. So if, if for, for many reasons, it will become a financial decision because there will be a significant loss of revenue um, and I've, I've worked in another municipality where it was, it was several hundred thousand dollars. I can't quantify it at this moment, but um, we, if we're going to do a fulsome study, we'll need 
some time to do that. Yeah, um, but what I can come back to you on is, is um, you know, what would the quantity, like what would the financial implications be? Perhaps we could start there and then um, um, spiral out from that point. Okay, three cycles is good for that. <laughs> Mr. Cieo? Yeah, sorry, and just to add, um, I did some experimentation with 15 minute convenience parking yep. uh, in certain designated spots. I think that's something we can work yeah, with BIA uh, because I think the issue that we found is when you give away free parking, what happens is staff end up taking up that parking, staff of shops, and it actually works counterintuitive to actually yeah. help businesses. So, uh, but let us take a look at some different options, and I think working with the downtown BIA, uh, but sometimes those 15 minute drop in, drop out, especially with how society is going now where yeah. there's a lot of pickup uh, orders, uh, yeah. it, it may help. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, appreciate it. And I just Thank want to you. add on to that because he's right, and that's been one of the, my main complaint that I've received from a number of people is that it's the people that are in and out, they're picking up a cake, uh, they're running in the bank, they're the ones real quick, the time it takes to go to the, the bank, the, the, the pay machine, to then put it in your dash, and then to go in, they're saying for those ones, and, and you're right, because the main reason for parking fees, it's not revenue, it's turnover. And the secondary benefit is revenue. But you're right. If you give too long, staff use it. But, but I like that idea, that 15 minutes, something brief. So it doesn't cost us anything. And we don't need overzealous parking enforcement on Queen Street. We want to encourage people. And I know it's only a $15 ticket, but it's enough for, to really discourage people. Exactly. You know, somebody's coming down to support downtown for the first time, right. and they run into Moody's Bakery, and they grab fresh bread, and they come out, and the bread now costs oh, yeah. $22. They're going to have a sour taste in their mouth, and it's oh, not yeah. going to be from the sourdough. So appreciate <laughs> it. So, wow. He yeah, he did. He did. He worked on okay, thank you for that, Councillor Dabrowski. I've got Councillor Strange, then Peter Angelo. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. And oh, you're uh, good? what's that? Oh, you're good. Okay, okay, gotcha, Mr. Mayor. I was planning on doing a notice of motion, and because uh, I've been working on this, and uh, um, so if if Council will uh, will allow me, I uh, I'm gonna. I want to break protocol and do two motions, and it's about our garbage and litter maintenance with trails and parks. Um, so I don't know if council will allow me to break what, protocol. What, you know, we got to. It depends on if you because we can do that, yep. or if it's direction. So we'll see how well, the CAOs feel, and and uh, what is the. Yeah, once you introduce it, then we'll see how the CAOs CAOs feeling. Okay, so you know we've been we've been getting a lot of moodies in. <laughs> a lot of. A lot of emails about garbage, and it's been a, a tough year. And uh, I, I saw a particular one uh, um, uh, email, uh, Mike Cushman, and there's been a, a tremendous amount of garbage, a large amount of complaints about garbage and litter on city property. Um, while same amount of this is typical for this time of year, some is likely a follow of the every other week garbage pickup, and therefore some illegal dumping that takes place in our bins and on city property. This has taken a toll on our maintenance, practices, and resources. People want to do the right thing and bag their dog droppings, but with no bins out, there's nowhere to put them. So I would like to, can I make the motion? Well, yeah, why don't you say what you wanted to do, and okay. then we'll see the well, best way. I, like, I, I would like to uh, make a motion to immediately prioritize the placement of bins on trails, at parks, and at locations with high pedestrian traffic, and including the exercise equipment and areas where we have received complaints from the community. Further, we need to consider the increase in litter and increase our, our resource accordingly to address this for future years. This needs to be an immediate priority as soon as the spring thaw occurs every year. Okay. And then there's a second part. Okay, second part. Okay. okay. Um, I noticed that when residents send in their photos of litter and complaints, they almost always offer to help. They want to, they don't know how, um, you know, through the par parks in the city, we have twice a year where we do a community sweep, and that's all goes through Jeff Garashi and, and the park in the city, and, and, they, and it's an amazing thing. But people want to help in their neighborhoods individually or as group, and um, you know we have we have some issues with staffing up our maintenance teams this year, uh, this time of year, and hiring all the laborers as we need. I thought it would be good to engage and encourage residents. Of course, we already have our community cleanup day, our programs like Adopt a Street. But many residents want to clean up on their own time or don't want to wait until June for the community cleanup and our parks and streets need tidying up now. I would like to make a motion for staff to investigate starting a program that would encourage individual residents to go on their own or with their friends or family to clean up places where they see need. Parks, streets, roads. 
The program could include an online sign-up form, property insurance coverage on their property while they're doing the cleanup, a place to pick up and drop off supplies like garbage bags, gloves, and pickers, the safe pickers, but it's obviously with COVID, nobody wants to be touching anything, so maybe we can have staff come back and, uh, you, know, you know, they have the pickers at the dollar store, and if we can get them cheap enough, we can, you know, they can sign up, give it, and there's an exact one that, and I looked, and we can um, kind of uh, look at, at uh, you know, bridge on theirs. It's the city of Hamilton has a similar program called Team Up to Clean Up Hamilton. So we can do the same type of thing, and we can bridge off them. Mm -hmm. So I would like to make those. Want me to do the individual motions or? So let me first, I'm gonna to go to the CAO first okay. suggestion yeah. and then we can either lift procedural bylaw okay. uh, or we could do a direction with everything. Uh, thank you, through the mayor to the councilor and to council. Uh, what I will say is that on the first item, uh, our operations team is rolling out 100 uh, garbage uh, bins um, targeted at the trails. That will happen next week. Uh, so that's been prioritized. Uh, I will just inform council that, um, you know, there's one thing about putting the garbage bins out, uh, but that means that we have to go and collect the garbage bags. Uh, and we are about 25 to 30 students short of our hiring at this point in time. So we have uh, pretty significant human resource constraints on it. But we do agree with the priority of that. And uh, we are uh, looking at, uh, as I said, rolling out 100 bins. So um, I, we've already kind of prioritized that, Councillor, and, and okay. we understand the community needs and we appreciate you bringing that up. Um, on the second item, if you'd like, we can take it as uh, staff direction um, and, uh, or if Council wants to waive uh, procedural order and make it a formal motion, either way we can, uh, we'll report back on it. We are trying to, uh, there are some insurance requirements that we need to just uh, take a hurdle if someone is, uh, gets injured doing that on behalf of the city. It, are they covered by our insurance? Are they not covered by insurance? So we need to just go through a, a few hurdles to develop a program similar to what Hamilton has done. Uh, but we'll certainly uh, take a look at that. Okay, can I just... You want to make a motion then uh, that we uh, relieve the... Um, how do we say that, uh, Mr. Clerk? Waive procedural. Yeah, waive procedural by... I will, yes, I'll make a motion. A okay, motion by Councillor uh, Strange, second by Councillor Peter Angelo that we waive procedural bylaw for this next motion. All those in favor? Okay, and that's unanimous. Um, go you want ahead. Me to make, so I'll make the, the second motion yeah. then. Okay, um, I would like to make a motion for staff to investigate starting a program that would encourage individual residents to go on their own or with their friends or family to clean up places where they see a need. The program could include an online sign up form, proper insurance coverage on our property while they're doing the cleanup a place to pick up and drop off supplies like garbage bags, gloves, and pickers. And like I said, we can uh, bridge mark from the, the city of Hamilton as, as a similar program team up to clean up Hamilton, as well as our own uh, park in the city committee. And we, we do have a meeting tomorrow, so we could discuss that with, with our, our leader, uh, Jeff Garashi, because he does have similar stuff going on with our clean sweep that we do a couple times a year, but we can do that towards residents and maybe we can get that on that committee and, and, and bring back something from them and staff as well. That's great, so motion by Councillor Strange, second by Councillor Peter Angelo. Any discussion to the motion? I'll call the vote, all those in favor? Okay, and that's unanimous, thank you for that. Is there any, any other new business? Uh, Councillor Dabrowski? Motion for adjournment, seconded by Councillor Campbell. All those in favor? All right, we're adjourned. Thank you, everybody.